And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to Earl E. Wilson Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Tomchak on the call. Game three of this three-game series between UNLV and San Jose State. The Rebels, who lead the Mount West 24-11, 14-3 in conference play, while the Spartans are 18-17, 9-8 in conference play. UNLV is looking for the sweep after picking up a win last night against the Spartans. UNLV winning that game 13 to 7 won the uh, Thursday game 13 to 12 the rebels have you know showing you why they're one of the best offensive teams not only in the Mount West but in the country they have continuously scored double digit runs against the Spartans UNLV looking to take 5 out of 6 this year against San Jose State for UNLV they'll have Noah Matera out as the starting pitcher the left-hander sophomore the 5.25 ERA 4-0 is his record it's the seventh game that he has started 10th overall appearance 36 innings pitch he's given up 45 it's 23 runs, 21 of them have been earned. Nine walks, 28 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 312 against Matera, who wears number 41 for UNLV from Moore Park, California, as he will try to get a solid performance for the Rebels. The last five games has been a little bit, excluding the Dixie State game, last five games a little bit alarming for UNLV as a pitching staff uh, really have been hit hard. UNLV, they have given up 58 runs in those five games, a three against UNR and the two against San Jose State. They want to kind of slow some, slow the Spartans down a little bit, kind of pick up the confidence uh, for the Rebels and, and also be able to hold the lead. In those five games, UNLV has held a substantial lead and has blown those leads, although UNLV been able to come away with some victories, three and two in that span. The Rebels off to a very, very good uh, 2022 season. I've already surpassed their win total from last year where they went 20 and 13, 15 and 12 in conference play. As coming up to bat here will be Robert Hamchuk. The sophomore, 335 average on the year, 52 hits and 155 plate appearances. He scored 27 runs, eight doubles on the year, one triple, five home runs and 18 RBIs. This is a San Jose State team coming into this weekend series uh, against UNLV. Overall batting average was 275, sixth best in the conference compared to UNLV's 336, which is best in the conference. Matera set first pitch of this beautiful Saturday afternoon is going to be taken down low for a ball. 1-0 is the count. Hamchuk, the sophomore from San Jose, California. Is two for ten in this series. Only one game that he hasn't hit, that he's hit below 300. Very consistent hitter for the Spartans. He'll take the first uh, next pitch in there for a strike. One and one is the count. Came into this weekend series third most hits in the Mountain West. The Spartans team that have scored some runs. They've scored 12 in the loss on Thursday, seven yesterday. As this one is fouled back out of play. So San Jose State, you know. They're, they're, they're liking what they're doing offensively, but it's the pitching that has just had a world of trouble. Team ERA at 7.206 in the Mount West. UNLV uh, has scored in double digits in fi uh, four of the five games against the Spartans, although San Jose State has given UNLV one of their three losses in conference plays. Matera goes for the off-speed pitch, misses on the outside, and the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. UNLV winning yesterday's ball game 13 to 7. The Thursday game, boy, was a interesting one. The Rebels uh, had to squeak that one out there. As this one's going to be sent over to third, deep in the hole. There is Alarcon, long throw over to first. Will not be in time, and it gets by Hank Zeisler. Backing up there is the catcher Eric Bajani. As Alarcon deep in the hole there, Amchuk is able to beat out the throw. I believe he was going to beat out the throw before it got by Zeisler. So we'll see if that will be an infield hit or an error. If it is for Hamchuk, that'll be his 53rd hit of the year. Right As fielder. coming up to bat here will be the right fielder, James Shimashita. The junior batting 264 on the year, 28 hits and 106 plate appearances, eight doubles, a triple, two home runs, and 12 RBIs. So it'll be a lefty versus lefty matchup. One thing you will notice here, the winds are really picking up, pushing way out uh, into left field. As this one will be taken high for a ball, 1-0 as a count. Setting it defensively for UNLV under head coach Stan Stolte. Austin Krizik is out in left. Rylan Charles is out in center. Joey Walls is out in right field. Alarcon over at third. Andrade is at short. Williams is at second. Zeisler is at first. And Eric Bajani is behind the plate for UNLV. As the next pitch will be taken high for a ball. 2-0 is the count. They're going to give an error there on the third baseman, Alarcon, on the throw. So not the best start there for UNLV. As Noah Matera will try to get out of this inning with a zero spot on the board. Matera, the sophomore, currently right now in a 3-0 count. Spartans, who finished last year 6-32-19 in conference play. So they have really 
had a nice turnaround this year, 18 and 17, 9 and 8 in the Mount West. They're currently sitting fourth in the conference, UNLV first. The Wolfpack of UNR currently in second. This one's going to be high and inside ball four. So an error and a walk as you see the wind's really starting to pick up here. Two on, nobody out in the top of the first inning for the Spartans looking to salvage one game after being denied a victory in the Thursday night game and the Friday night game. Charles McAdoo will be up to bat. The sophomore, 385 average, 55 hits and 143 plate appearances. 11 doubles, 2 triples, 9 home runs, and 36 RBIs. He'll have an opportunity here with 2 on and nobody out. Matera set first pitch here will be taken for a strike. 0-1 oh is the count. Timothy Rush is the home plate umpire. Brooks O'Hearn is over at first. Rob Hansen is at second. Dave Gimby is over at third. That is the umpire and crew here today at Early Wilson Stadium. A right, cloud in sight as this one is high up into the air. This is going to play some tricks here out in right field. Coming on over is the right fielder. Walls tagging from second to third here. There'll be no throw as it was cut off by Adarian Williams as Hamchuk is able to advance to third. So McAdoo with a productive at bat here is able to move the runner into scoring position more, over to third with runners on the corners here and one out. Dalton Bowling will be up to bat. Sophomore, 287 average, 33 hits and 115 plate appearances. Eight doubles, six home runs, and 28 RBIs. Double play is in order here for UNLV, but it'll be a lefty versus righty matchup here. Two lefties uh, starting the ball game for San Jose State, Ethan Ross, and obviously for UNLV, Noah Matera. Terra standing six foot. Sends the first pitch, swing and a miss there for a strike. 0 1 is the count. The last outing for Matera came uh, uh, against the Wolfpack of UNR last week. He went six innings, gave up seven hits, two runs, one earn, a walk, three strikeouts, did not pick up the decision. His last win came against New Mexico, where he went five innings and gave up three earn. As there's a about a three quarter swing there, good pitch there by Matera, and the count goes to 0 and 2. Last time Noah faced San Jose State, he went three and two-thirds innings, gave up six hits, three runs, three earned, a walk, and three strikeouts. He is 4-0 on the year, wins against San Diego, Cal Poly, Air Force, and New Mexico. This one high up into the air in the left field. This ball is well hit, going back at the wall, and it is gone. Off the scoreboard, a three-run home run for San Jose State, and they start the party here in the top of the first inning. A three-run home run for Dalton Bowling. And the Spartans take a 3-0 lead here in the top of the first inning. For the third baseman, that is his seventh home run of the year, RBI number 29, 30 and 31. As you see there on the instant replay, Bowling is able to extend that one out there. Low pitch and just crushed it off the scoreboard. I mentioned the wind is really blowing out to left field, so that got up in the jet stream. And so Noah Matera and the Rebels... Down three to nothing here as Omar Gastelum will be up to bat. The sophomore batting 324 on the year, 23 hits and 71 plate appearances. He'll send a chopper down the third baseline foul. So kind of the unfortunate there for UNLV. An error, a walk, one hit in the inning so far for the Spartans, but it leads to three runs. So UNLV will have to kind of play a comeback yet again against San Jose State. As Noah is set here, and the pitch is going to be up the middle for a base hit. Got by, got by the glove there of the sophomore for UNLV. So it's back-to-back -back hits here for the Spartans as they're really putting the pressure on UNLV with one out here in the top of the first inning. Number 24, Jack Collette. Jack Collette will be up to bat. The junior batting 231 on the year, 27 hits and 117 plate appearances. Six doubles, two home runs, and 15 RBIs. So for Gastelum wearing number 56, it just picked up his fourth hit of the series with that single. The big hit here, Bowling with a three-run bomb to left field that went off the scoreboard. So lefty versus lefty matchup here, Matera. His button's going to be placed down here, but it's going to be pushed back foul. And the count goes to 0-1. For the sophomore, Bowling from Fremont, California. He has now picked up his fifth hit of the series and scored his fifth run. A big three-run bomb there as the Spartans who have given UNLV, as I mentioned, one of their three losses in conference play. The other two, UNLV, dropped the first two games last weekend against UNR. As this one will be sent over to second, Adairi Williams has it. We'll throw to second for the force out at second for out number two. I thought Williams was going to go to first there, but did a quick fire there going to second, get the lead runner out. So Gaslam is out as Colette is safe there at first on the fielder's choice. Matera now has two outs here trying to get out of this inning. Hunter Giroux. 
Hunter DeRoe will be up to bat. Sophomore, 252 average on the year, 27 hits and 107 plate appearances. Six doubles, a triple, 10 home runs, and 27 RBIs. The 10 home runs are the most in this San Jose State lineup. Lefty versus righty matchup here as the first pitch. His swung on a miss for a strike. 0 1 is the count. For UNLV in this red hot offense, as I mentioned, for the Rebels, they are have been scoring double digit runs at will against not only San Jose State, but every opponent in the conference. They will have Ryland Charles, Austin Krizik, and Diego Alarcon do up 1 2 and 3. This one down low, good stop there by Bajani, and the count will go to 1 and 1. Look at it for UNLV. After picking up a win against Dixie State on Tuesday, 3-2 is the score of that game. Uh, they've had some uh, high-scoring games against San Jose State, winning 13-12 on Thursday, 13-7 on Friday as Matera is set. This one is going to be taken down low for a ball, and the count will go to 1-1. One and one. Two outs here in the top of the first inning. UNLV coming into this uh Weekend averaging about nine, nine to ten runs per game compared to the Spartans who are sitting about seven as there's a swing and a miss there. And the count goes to, actually, no, sorry, two and two here in the top of the first inning. If you're just joining us here, Dalton Bowling with a three run home run off the scoreboard there in left field after the Rebels gave up an error and a walk. Oh, Matera trying to get out of this inning here with just those three runs given up. Runner on first here, looking for the strikeout. That pitch down low, and the count will go full three and two. McKenna Olasso is due up next here for the Spartans. San Jose State has made some, has made some great strides here this year, improving from last year. As runner going, 3-2 pitch, misses high and outside. Ball four, so that's two walks in the inning here. For the sophomore Matera, who came in with just nine walks and 36 innings pitch, has given up two walks early on here. One to Shimashita, and this one here to Dora. Number 50, McKenna Olasso. Olasso will be up to bat here. The designated hitter, freshman batting 291 on the year, 16 hits and 55 plate appearances, two doubles, two home runs, and 11 RBIs. As runners on second and first here yet again for the Spartans, as there's a swing and a miss there for a strike. 0 1 is the count. UNLV here at Early Wilson Stadium. Not as good as they've been on the road this year. The Rebels 11-2 on the road here at home, 11-9. and They have dropped two of their three conference games here at home as the next pitch by Matera is a swing and a miss there, and the count goes to 0-2. But with the way this offense is going for UNLV, this 3 nothing deficit and the way, I mean, just the series is gone, really, any deficit is uh, not safe. Rebels, one of the, as I mentioned, tops in the Mountain West in nearly every hitting statistics. Runner is going pitch outside, and Bajani double clutches that one. Could have had a chance there at third. I believe Alec Khan was a little bit late getting to the bag there. I can't quite see there's a big pull there covering uh, the third base bag. That one on the outside. So runner advances over to third. Colette with the stolen base. That is his sixth stolen base of the year, six for seven on this 2022 campaign. Spartans were coming into this series 21 out of 32. Compared to UNLV, they were 27 out of 30 on stolen base opportunities. So runners on the corners yet again. The count is 1 and 2, almost similar to the situation Dalton Bowling had when he hit a three-run bomb. Here's a swing and a miss, strike three. Matera is able to get the strikeout, but not after the damage was done here by the Spartans. A three-run home run here in the top of the first inning. UNLV will be up to bat for the first time here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be right back here on the Mount West Network on Stadium and on Learfield.
Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Tomchak on the call. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Spartans get three runs in the top of the first. I like a bit. big home run by Dalton Bowling, the third baseman, with a long bomb that hit off the left field wall here at Early Wilson Stadium as the first pitch will be taken on the inside for a ball. 1-0 is the count here. Ethan Ross has three runs to work with here as he starts out his outing. The sophomore struggling so far this year with a 9.95 ERA, and this one comes inside and hits Ryland Charles there. So Charles is hit by a pitch there for the 11th time this year, most on this UNLV lineup, so not a good start there for Ross. Very Wild there, and here comes Austin Krizik. Finish out the stat line for Ross. 0-2 is his record. This is his 12th appearance of the year, ninth start. Has gone 31 in two-thirds innings. Has given up 40 hits, 36 runs. 35 of them have been earned. 41 strikes to 28 strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 317 against the sophomore. Just hit his 11th batter of the year. 11 batters that he has hit in 31 innings of work. So a lefty versus righty matchup here as Austin Krizik will be up to bat. The left fielder for UNLV. The first pitch on the inside for a ball. 1-0 is a count. Krizik batting 371, 52 hits, and 140 plate appearances. 17 doubles, 3 triples, 6 home runs, and 33 RBIs. Krizik, who's currently on a 10-game hitting streak, is 3 for 8 in the series with 2 RBIs, a double, and a home run. And that pitch misses outside 2-0 as a count here. Now we're seeing for Ross, uh, Wild here to start out his outing for UNLV. I would kind of wait for him to just throw a strike over the plate. So you got Charles over at first. Rebels, who are the best offensive team in the Mount West. This one down low yet again. 3-0 is the count. Krizik, who has walked 26 times. That's most in this UNLV lineup. Krizik coming into this weekend series. Sixth best average in the Mount West. Slugging was at sixth. On base percentage at fourth. Run second. Hit sixth. RBIs eighth. Triples tied for first. As that won't be in there for a strike. And walks tied for third. He is at the top of the Mount West in a lot of statistical categories here. As the count is 3-1 and one here. Now, San Jose State, uh, decent offensively, but uh, de uh, the pitching has just not been up to par. 7.20 team ERA. That one hits on the outside for a strike. 3-2 and two is the count. That, is the, that ERA is sixth in the Mount West. They've given up 344 hits, 281 runs. 247 of them have been earned. So they're trying to kind of slow down this high-powered offense here for UNLV, and it will not start there as Austin Chris is able to draw the walk there. So a hit batter and a walk. Well, we saw him there in the top of the first inning, an error and a walk led to a three-run home run. It comes up Diego Alarcon, who's got the power, 329 average for Alarcon. 49 hits and 149 plate appearances, 11 doubles, one triple, seven home runs, and 38 RBIs. Next four batters for UNLV all have seven home runs. It's a very high-powered, consistent offense. As uh, we have a stoppage of play here, I believe uh, Gate might have gotten open. Uh, down the third baseline. So Charles is over at second. Krizik at first. Alarcon up to bat here, the third baseman. He has been 4 for 10 in this series with three RBIs and a home run. Has scored four runs as well. First pitch will be taken high for a strike. 0 1 is a count. Diego on the year against left handed hitters, batting 324 and with runners on base. A very healthy 318. Ross right now in a little bit of trouble here after his team gave him three runs to work with in the top of the first inning as Alarcon is going to send this one to second. Potential double play here. Four, six, throw to first in time. Four, six, three, double play. Big time ground out there for the Spartans as Alarcon grounds out to the double play there. As advancing over to third will be Ryland Charles, but two outs in the inning as the number four hole hitter, Hank Zeisler, will be up to bat. The senior batting 4-11 on the year, 53 hits and 129 plate appearances, 12 doubles, 3 triples, 7 home runs, and 41 RBIs. As McAdoo threw that one over to Theo Hardy, over to the first baseman, Hunter Duro. Duro, my apologies, uh, for the double play for the Spartans. So UNLV will try to get a two-out hit here and at least chip away at this 3-0 deficit. Ooh, Zeisler gets hit there on the inside. Ross has hit two left-handed hitters so far. Uh, to start out his uh, outing as that one goes high and inside on the shoulder there of Zeisler. So now the tying run will come up to the plate form of right, Joey two. Walls. Nine, Walls, the junior, batting 395 on the year, 47 hits and 119 plate appearances, 17 doubles, a triple, seven home runs, and 34 RBIs. Walls, who has been a little bit of a funk uh, over the last few games, three for his last 22 and seen the average gone down from 446 to 395. The series he's one for five as a throwback over to first, but 
He has scored two runs and has been able to get four walks as well. Walls, who had that uh, unbelievable uh, week against Arizona State in New Mexico, where he not only won Mount West Player of the Week, but uh, the National Player of the Week is another throwback over to first. So runners on the corners here. Zeisler at first. Charles is over at third. Walls on the year against left-handed pitchers, batting 382. Runners on base, 373. And with two outs, 469 all. Really, really elite numbers there for Walls, the right fielder for UNLV. Lefty versus righty matchup here as the pitch off speed. Dropped in there, missed on the outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count. Darian Williams is due up next here for the Rebels. Jordan Andrade is in the hole. Eric Bajani is slated in the eight-hole spot for UNLV. And Santino Panaro, the designated hitter, in the nine-hole spot after the Spartans saw eight batters come up in the top of the first inning. As I mentioned, the wind is really blowing out as Walls sends this one back, foul into the net, and the count goes to one and one. Rebels uh, on this 13-game uh, homestand, starting out with a win against UC Riverside, lost two out of three against UNR in a series that for the Rebels, they felt that they should have swept, at least gotten two out of three. They blew a game late uh, the Friday night game is the off-speed misses, misses on the outside for a ball. 2-0 and as a count, and the uh, Wolfpack exploded in the Saturday game, coming back uh, from a deficit and scoring 22 runs before UNLV was able to get a big, all-important win on Sunday. Rebels looking for the sweep here. Currently down 3-0, but they've got the tie run to the plate. Wall swings and misses at that one for a strike. 2-2 two and two is the count. Uh, Darian Williams over... I mentioned on in the on-deck circle for UNLV, Ross trying to get out of this inning was wild, has put up a lot of base runners on the base pass. Uh, two walk, or a walk and two hit batters, but it made him get a double play, and he gets a swing and a miss there. Walls misses on that one, and UNLV will strand two runners on the base pass here as we go to the top of the second inning here at Early Wilson Stadium. San Jose State leading it 3 to nothing here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Why Tom check on the call? Thank you for joining us here on the Mountain West Network on Stadium. And this broadcast brought to you by Learfield as well. UNLV trailing this one three to nothing. Spartans a three-run home run, the lone hit of the ball game. Off the bat there, the third baseman Dalton Bowling is seventh home run of the year. Hit off the left field uh, scoreboard as the first pitch will be taken down low for a ball. One and knows account. Excuse me. As coming up to bat here will be the shortstop Theo Hardy. Hardy, sophomore, batting 221 on the year, 15 hits and 68 plate appearances, a double, three triples, one home run, and 13 RBIs. As Noah Matera back out for another inning of work. Noah only gave up one hit in the inning, but unfortunately for him it was a three-run home run. He walked the batter and then was not helped out. Uh, actually, they're going to say it was going to be an infield hit. They have actually changed it. Hamchuk was able to beat out the throw for an infield hit. So they did give an error to uh, – no. Oh, my apologies. Uh, it's actually, no, it's going to be still ruled an error there for uh, Alarcon. So that's kind of the unfortunate thing there for, as that one is fouled back out of play, unfortunate thing there for Noah Matera because, you know, you get, uh, you know, a walk and then, you know, you get a ground out but not the, the official play. 
and then a three-run home run, just one one bad pitch leads to you know a three-nothing deficit. UNLV was able to get some runners on, but couldn't get the timely hit. As this one is going to be sent into the gap for a base hit, it's going to be cut off there by the center fielder for UNLV, Charles. But heading over to second, it's actually bobbled there by Charles. There'll be a stand-up double there for Theo Hardy. Looked like it was going to be a close play there, but. Uh, Charles out there in center field bobbled the ball, and it's another extra base hit here for the Spartans as they get a runner on second with nobody out here in the top of the second inning. As we go back to the top of the lineup, Robert Hamchuk. Hamchuk reached on an error in his first plate appearance. Well, we saw there in the bottom of the first inning for Ethan Ross, the starting pitcher for San Jose State, very wild, really wild against left-handed hitters as the first pitch will be taken high and inside. He hit Rylan Charles, and he hit uh, Hank Zeisler. The other left-handed hitter uh, in this lineup for UNLV is Santino Panero, the uh, nine-hole hitter, so he's probably going to be well aware. I'm going to step, out of the, uh, step away from the plate there a little bit extra as this one off speed is going to be swung on a miss for a strike. One and one is the count here. Amchuk, who wears number 23, sophomore from San Jose, California. Been very, uh, really consistent hitter. Only one game that he has hit below 300. Lefty versus righty matchup here. As this one will miss on the outside for a ball. Two and one is the count. So the double there by Hardy. We've had a double, a home run. UNLV got three runners on the base pass, but. Uh, the double play there really ended the threat, a uh, big threat for UNLV. They had two on with nobody out. So a double play, Diego Alarcon on a 4-6-3 double play. And as the count right now is 2-2, two and two, nobody out here as Matera looking for the strikeout. He was able to get Olasso the strikeout to end the top of the first inning. Noah's set, and the pitch. He's going to be up the middle. Diving attempt there by Williams. It goes into center field for a base hit. Hardy's going to be waved home. The throw will be cut off there by Zeisler, and it's 4 to nothing. San Jose State here in the top of the second inning. As a Darian Williams, he was playing closer to the bag there. Diving attempt, as you see here on the instant replay. Williams, a valiant effort, just got by as it trickled on into center field. Hardy with some good speed there right is able to score as the throw was cut off by... Hank Zeisler, so Hamchuk with the RBI. That's his 19th RBI of the year as UNLV. See anybody moving around there in the bullpen as um, Noah Matera right now has given up four runs as the first pitch misses on the outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count, but for Noah, obviously you got to throw in that, uh, that air there. He's given up four runs. Three of them, though, are going to be earned uh, for the sophomore who came into this uh, outing 4-0 on the year. But the ERA sitting at 5.25 is going to continue to climb here with one on, nobody out, and the score 4 to nothing. The Spartans, who made a furious comeback on Thursday night, as that one misses outside for a ball. Now 3-0 is the count. UNLV would score a six spot in the, top, in, the, in the bottom of the first inning. Spartans were then scored three in the top of the second. We're down six to three, and then scored five in the top of the fifth inning before UNLV got two in the fifth and then four in the sixth. Spartans were able to get four in the ninth, really threatened, but UNLV was able to close out with the win. As that one is in there for a strike, three and one is the count. In that game, you had 25 uh, combined runs and 30 combined hits for both teams. It was a very high. Howard scoring game. Eric Bajani, Hank Zeisler went deep for UNLV as a check swing is going to be taken for a strike. Three and two is the count, so Matera's been able to bounce back on the three and oh count to make the count full three and two. In yesterday's game, UNLV winning 13 to seven as Matera looking for the strikeout. The payoff pitch is swung on a miss, strike three. So James Shimashita is retired on strikes there. Four out number one, Shimashita, who was able to draw the walk in his first plate appearance and came around to score, is retired. Charles McAdoo will be up to bat. McAdoo, defensively, was able to help start that 4-6-3 double play in the bottom of the first inning and stop the threat for the Rebels. Runner on first here, one out. McAdoo is 0 for 1. And a fly ball to right field as a check swing goes around. Boy, 
for strike one. It almost fell over was uh, the second baseman. Hit a, he had a fly ball to right center field that uh, was able to get Hamchuk to tag from second to third. And then the big hit so far in this ballgame, Dalton Bowling with a three-run home run right after him. He's due up next. As Matera set the pitch, inside, one and one is the count. And yesterday's game, UNLV, 13 runs scored off of 15 hits. For the Spartans, they scored seven runs off of 11 hits. Scored three in the uh, top of the ninth inning. That's some really, they've scored seven runs in the ninth inning against the Rebels in these first two games. Next pitch is a chopper that will go foul down the third baseline. And the count will go to one and two, one out here. In the top of the second inning, already one run in. Four to nothing is the score. Theo Hardy with a double. And then Robert Hamchuk with a RBI single up the middle. And yesterday's ball game, home runs for UNLV came off the bat of Charles Krizik and Diego Alarcon. The lone home run for San Jose State came off the bat there of Hunter Duro. So Spartans now with two home runs in this series. Well, UNLV is really just, I mean, just showing the power, the consistency in all, all aspects of uh, their hitting. As the pitch here from... Matero is going to be sent over to short. Tough play here for second. Throw back to first. Will not be in time. Good play there by Andrade going to his right deep in the hole to at least get the lead runner out. Williams, the return throw to first was late. So they get the force out there at second. Can't get the 6-4-3 double play, but we do have two outs now here in the top of the second inning. The Spartans leading it 4 to nothing. As coming up to that here will be Dalton Bowling. Bowling with the big hit so far in this ball game. A three-run home run in his last plate appearance as another runner on the base pass. This time, though, they said that's coming up to with two outs. As the first pitch misses outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count. The Rebels in the bottom of the second inning will have a Darian Williams, Jordan Andrade, and Eric Bajani do up. Six, seven, and eight hitters. Next pitch. Off speed will hit there for a strike. One and one is the count. I could do over at first, reaching on the fielder's choice here. Sparn to coming into this uh, this weekend against UNLV had a really impressive win against uh, series sweep against San Diego State. And the Spartans have really had a, a rough year as this one high and outside for a ball. Two and one is the count. The standings in the Mount West. UNLV currently sitting at first, 14 and three. UNR second at 10 and six. Fresno State third, nine and six. San Jose State is fourth, nine and eight. Air Force is fifth. At five and eight, New Mexico six, sitting at six and eleven, and San Diego State last set three and fourteen. You don't see that a lot with San San Diego State, as this one is fouled back out of play, and the count will go even two and two here in the top of the second inning. Matera trying to get out of this inning with only the one run given up. His pitch count right now is already over fifty, and we haven't gotten through two innings of work here. Next pitch, runner going. This one is going to be sent to third, past the diving Alarcon there at third. Runner was going on the 2-2 pitch there, and will advance to third. That is McAdoo, so a hit here for Bowling yet again. He is now two for two, a home run and a single. Runners on the corners here with two outs. And as you see here on the instant replay, another diving attempt there. San Jose State so far in this inning are just getting it by the uh, – the defenders for UNLV. The first one, Darian Williams trying to dive to keep it in play on the RBI single, and this one here by Alarcon. Both have been unsuccessful. Omar Gaslam will be up to bat. Gaslam is one for one on the day. The lefty versus righty matchup yet again. A lot of righties in this lineup for San Jose State as the off-speed pitch hits on the outside for a strike. 0-1 is the count. In fact, looking at this lineup, seven of the nine hitters are right-handed hitters for the Spartans for UNLV. Uh, they have six of their nine uh, hitters here today that are right-handed hitters. As this one is going to go up the middle for a base hit. Another run will score here for the Spartans as McAdoo comes on in, and San Jose State has... Really jumped out here. Great start for the Spartans as they lead it now 5 to nothing in the top of the second as Matera gives up another base hit here. Second straight hit with two outs. As Jack Collette will be up to bat. Collette is 0 for 1 on the day. So McAdoo scores. Bowling will head on over to second off the RBI hit there from the catcher Gaslam. His 13th RBI of the year. 
And the Rebels currently right now needing a big out here from Noah Matera as the next pitch will, or the first pitch will be taken for a strike. 0 and 1 is the count. So UNLV will have to get the bats rolling here in the bottom of the second inning. They will have Adarian Williams, Jordan Andrade, and Eric Bajani do up the 6, 7, and 8 hitters. 5 to nothing. Spartans leading this one here. Matera set the pitch inside for a ball. 1 and 1 is the count. The center fielder Colette up to bat here. On the year against left-handed hitters, just hitting 156 with two outs sitting, hitting at 206. Matera set the next pitch, swing and a miss there for a strike. One and two is the count. Both the team, I mentioned for San Jose State, really improving on their record from last year. So has UNLV. UNLV 20 and 13 in the 2021 season, 15 and 12 in conference play. Rebels right now sitting 24 and 11, 14 and 3. In the Mount West, as there is a swing and a miss. Ball was dropped there by Bajani. Throw on over to first, 2-3 to three on the score sheet. Strike out there for Noah Matera. But the Spartans do get two runs across the board here in the top of the second inning. UNLV will try to get the bats going as they trail this one 5 to nothing here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Tomchak on the call. I want to thank everyone for tuning in here on your Saturday afternoon, wherever you are watching. Beautiful day here in Las Vegas here on the Mount West Network on Stadium via the YouTube channel provided to us by UNLV Athletics and by Learfield. As the first pitch will be taken for a strike, 0-1 is the count here to Adarian Williams, the junior, batting 350 on the year, 50 hits and 143 plate appearances, three triples, seven home runs, and 48 RBIs. As Ethan Ross will be back out for another inning of work. He was wild in the top, in the bottom of the first inning, hit two batters, uh, but was helped out and also walked Austin Krizik, but was helped out with a big 4-6-3 double play and then a strikeout on Joey Walls. And it's currently right now the count is 2-1 and one here to Williams. A Darian who's got an RBI in 11 straight games and a hit in 12 of the last 13 games. In the series, he is 2 for 10 with three RBIs. Only seven games this season that Williams has not gotten a hit. Been very consistent for UNLV like everyone in this lineup. Only one batter in this lineup for the Rebels not hitting uh, above 300. It is Eric Bajani who is due up third in this uh, inning. He's hitting at 271, though. Williams will take this one down low, ball four. So Adarian is able to draw a leadoff walk there. His 26th walk of the year, now one behind Austin Krizik, who got a walk earlier. Krizik is sitting at 27. I'll bring up Jordan Andrade. 309 average for the shortstop for UNLV. Sophomore with 17 hits and 55 plate appearances. Three doubles, a home run, and seven RBIs for Andrade. He's been very effective in this series, five for eight. Has scored four runs with two RBIs and a walk. Six hits in the last three games and has improved that average from 261 to 309 in that span. So runner on first here, nobody out. Righty versus lefty matchup as they throw over to first. And Darian is back there. Williams on the year, five for five on stolen base opportunities. Rylan Charles is the leading uh, Steel getter on this UNLV team. He is 7 for 8 in this lineup, actually, as this one is popped up in the air down the right field line. The wind is pushing from right to left, but that one had enough strength there to get over the wall down the right field line. Foul ball there as the count goes 0-1. 
mentioned Eric Bajani due up next. Santino Panero is due up, uh, is in the hole. And for Panero, the left-handed hitter, I mentioned for Ethan Ross, he hit the two other left-handed hitters for UNLV as this one hits on the outside for a strike. 0-2 is the count. It was Charles and Zeisler. So for Panero, he's probably going to step back a little bit as you see the wind really blowing out here. Now really straight out to center field. We saw one ball get up in the jet stream and just carry out to left field. That was by bowling as Andrade gets underneath this one. High up in the air down the right field line. We'll see if this one will stay in play. It will, and it lands uh, for a foul ball. And right there in between the three defenders there for San Jose State as Dura, the first baseman, running on over. So is McAdoo and the right fielder, Shimashita. But that one lands, so Andrade will get another opportunity. Over the count, 0-2, nobody out, and runner on first here. In the bottom of the second inning, UNLV trail this one 5 to nothing. Rebels have scored 13 runs in back-to-back -back games against the Spartans. San Jose State did beat UNLV earlier this year up in San Jose, California. UNLV did win the series, though, 2 out of 3. Rebels won this, have won this series, but would love to get a sweep here as this one misses on the outside for a ball. 1 and 2 is the count. UNLV coming into this weekend, they led the nation in hits, doubles, and batting average. This one gets away from the catcher going over to second will be a Darian Williams. It keeps on rolling. Williams will take the turn, but we'll head back to second. As that got off the glove there of Gaslam, was not a good pitch there by Ross trying to get uh, Andrade to chase. Jordan has now been able to fight back here with now a Darian Williams over at second. The count right now, two and two. You know, we've got three base runners on uh, in the bottom of the first inning. Still looking for their first hit. They've had two hit batters and two walks. Count is two and two here to the shortstop Andrade. And the pitch way outside for a ball. Three and two is the count. So Ross in danger of walking another batter. That's been this problem uh, in his uh, outings so far this year. Coming into this uh, start, 41 walks and 31 and two-thirds innings of pitch. That's just a number that is not going to sit well with any uh, – any pitching coach. Ross in danger of walking back-to-back -back hitters here as the payoff pitch spiked in the dirt. It gets away. Williams is going to go to third here, and he'll be there safe after that one got away from Gaslam, although it was spiked there by Ross. And another walk there, back-to-back -back walk, so the Rebels trying to get a big inning of their own. The Spartans scored three in the top of the first and two in the top of the second. Eric Bajani will be up to bat here for the Rebels. Bajani, the senior, batting 271, 36 hits and 133 plate appearances, 10 doubles, 6 home runs, and 33 RBIs. Bajani, the senior from Anaheim, California, impressive series so far. He's gone 5 for 9 against the Spartans with 7 RBIs, 2 doubles, and a home run. Has improved the average uh, in this series from 248 to 271 and would like to get UNLV at least some runs here. Still looking for their first hit. This is the fifth base runner that UNLV has gotten. Three walks, two hit batters. First pitch down low for a ball. 1-0 and is the count. Nobody is warming up for the Spartans. Ross dealing with a – has a five-run cushion here as Gaslam wise here by the, uh, the sophomore coming out to talk to uh, Ross after Ross has really had some pitches get away from him. And just as I say that, we've got some players running over for San Jose State. See a couple here. Yeah, I see one of them, Darren Jansen, uh, wearing number 44. Also, Jonathan Clark as well. So now coming over is the home plate umpire, Timothy Resch, who will say, all right, let's go. Let's speed it up here. Meeting's over. Runners out the corners here. Williams at third, Andrade at first. Williams able to advance on a wild pitch, uh, actually to second and third on wild pitches. Bajani up to bat here. Eric, who has been phenomenal in this series so far, trying to chip away at this deficit. But right now, Ross is not throwing the ball over the plate. And for UNLV, they're just going to be patient and grind out at bats here. For Bajani, who is hitting 360 against left handed hitters so far this year, and with runners on the base paths, 307. Throw back over to first, and getting back over there will be Andrade. The Rebels will get uh, 
One day off, obviously, the series bumped up with uh, it being Easter Sunday tomorrow as Bajani will foul this one back, and the count goes to 2-1. They'll play a two-game series against Loyola Marymount. And then we'll welcome New Mexico for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series in the Lobos who were absolutely hammered by UNLV the last time the Rebels played uh, New Mexico in Albuquerque. UNLV scored 18 in the first game as Bajani will foul this one out of play. And the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. The Rebels scored 18 in the first game, 12 in the second game, and then 27 in the third game. Rebels with the sweep there. A very impressive weekend. It was highlighted by Joey Wallace hitting over 700. That will end this 13-game homestand for UNLV before going on the road for four straight games. Once again, one against Arizona State and then three against Air Force. And if you love scoring... A lot of long balls. Uh, tune into that game. Uh, the Falcons playing up in higher elevation. Those have been some high-scoring games. As this one misses outside, 3-2 is the count here. Ross in danger of walking the bases loaded here. He's walked uh, Williams, at, who's over at third. Andrade walked, is over at first. Even though he's still looking for their first hit, the payoff pitch. Bajani is going to be called. Out there on strikes, beautifully placed off-speed pitch there from Ross. Was able to drop that one in. Bajani, who had seen uh, the way Ross was wild, was hoping to get a walk there, but is struck out. That's the second strikeout that the Rebels have been caught on. Wall struck out to end the first inning. Santino Panaro will be up to bat. Panaro, the freshman, 375 average, 30 hits and 80 plate appearances, four doubles and 10 RBIs. Lefty versus lefty matchup. But Ross has... Uh, Drilled both left-handed hitters for UNLV. He tries to work inside. This one, though, will be for a strike. 0-1 is the count. Panera wearing number eight, freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada. Currently on a seven-game hitting streak with four of those games, multi-hit games. And this series, he's four for eight with two runs scored, a double, and an RBI. As this one is going to be sent to third. Potential double play ball here. Throw to second in time. Throw to first. Will not be as Panero is able to beat out the throw there. And UNLV scores a run as Williams is able to come around. And the Rebels now trail this one 5-1 to one as the throw there from Bowling to the second baseman. McAdoo got uh, Jordan Andrade out. The return throw the first, not in time, as Panero was able to beat out the throw. And that was big there for the Rebels just to at least get one run across. They had so many base runners. Still looking for their first hit, but they've got their first run. 5-1, to one, UNLV now trailing this one here. As coming up to bat will be Ryland Charles. Charles was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance. It was the 11th time that Charles has been hit by a pitch so far this year. And first pitch high, and it's going to be taken for a strike. 0 1 is a count. For Charles, a sophomore from Reno, Nevada, currently on a six game hitting streak, is 3 for 8 in this series. Had a home run in yesterday's win and has scored three runs. Austin Krizik due up next if Charles can keep this inning alive. Next pitch will be taken high for a strike. 0 2 is a count. So give credit to Ross. You know, both innings, he has uh, been wild. He has given up a uh, free pass, has hit a couple batters, but is limiting this high-powered offense of UNLV to no really big-time hits with runners on the base paths. He's one out away uh, from limiting UNLV to just one run. And the way that's big for UNLV, the way they've, they've scored 26 runs combined in the first two games of this series as the pitch missed high. One and two is the count. We'll see if Noah Matera will be back out for a third inning of work. He has... Uh, Struggled as well to uh, start his outing as this one inside, and the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. So far for Matera, 61 pitches through two innings. has given up six hits, five runs, four earned, two walks, and three strikeouts in the 15 batters that he has faced. Next pitch, and a swing and a foul ball that goes back behind the home plate umpire. Count still even 2-2 two and two here. I mentioned a very windy day. Temperature is dropping. Last weekend we were hitting around the 90s. As a pickoff move to first there, a late reaction by Panero, but he's able to get back uh, before being picked off there. Two and two's the count here. Ross trying to get out of this inning and also looking for his first win of the year. He's 0-2 in this 2022 campaign. Next pitch. And Charles will foul this one back out of play. Oh, 
Austin Krizik due up next here for the Rebels. He walked one of the three walks that UNLV has been able to get so far. They came in getting 170. They came into this weekend series uh, first in the Mountain West. Overall, they have 172 walks. This one inside, ball three. They're really making Ross work here. Ross has faced, now this is his 10th batter. Still hasn't given up a hit, but I believe it feels like every uh, batter that UNLV has brought up here has at least got up to three three balls against Ross as, as Charles sends a high drive into the gap here. Wynn's going to play some tricks on this one. It goes off the glove of the center fielder, Colette. Coming home, the score will be Panero. Charles will head on over to third. They're going to hold him up there, and it's going to be at the time as Charles fell down there at third. It went off the glove there of Colette in center field. As we mentioned, it's a very windy day here. I will see if that's going to be the first hit for UNLV or the first error for the Spartans. But what we do know is the Rebels just picked up their second run of the ball game. On a 3-2 pitch, uh, Ryland Charles was able to fly it, up, uh, get it up into the gap there as Colette going over to his left and just overran it as it hit off the top of his glove. So the Rebels get a gift here. And coming up to bat will be Austin Krizik. Krizik, who walked in his first plate appearance, and is this ball's going to get away. Coming home to score will be Charles. Thought that might have bounced and hit Krizik, but it did not. It got away there from Gaslam, and UNLV has scored now three runs here in the bottom of the second inning. And big play, you know, give credit to Santino Panero, who was able to beat out a, a potential double play ball that got the first run of the ball game, kept this inning alive, and the Rebels... In a blink of an eye, I've gotten this within two here. They're going to give that one a hit for Charles. It's going to be a triple for Ryland as the next pitch is going to be in there for a strike. 101 is a count. So for the sophomore, that is his first triple of the year and his 32nd RBI. Next pitch here from Ross. Misses on the outside for a ball. Two and one is a count. So 5-3 to three is the score. Ross is set here. The 2-1. Krizik will foul this one out of play. And the count goes even 2-2. Two and two. Base is cleared here. UNLV has finally been able to maneuver in some runs here. And the wildness there of Ross has come back to bite him. As due up next for UNLV is Diego Alarcon. If Krizik can keep this inning alive. This one, off-speed pitch down low. Krizik is able to hold his bat back. And the count goes full here yet again. Three and two is the count. Ross is set. And the payoff pitch. And Krizik will foul this one back out yet, yet again. And the count remained full here. Rebels, as we mentioned, have been much better on the road this year. 11 and two compared at home. 11 and nine. Although the Rebels have been really good in conference play. They've only lost two games here at home. Uh, as Chris will foul this one back into the net yet again. Three of those losses came in the first weekend against Michigan State. UNLV won the first game 4-2. to two, And then dropped the next three 10-6, 12-6, and 11-7. As this one fouled off yet again there by Krizik. As the count still remains full here, three and two. Five to three is the score. San Jose State got three in the first, two in the second. UNLV getting three here in the bottom of the second inning. Ross has set the pitch. Off speed and misses. Ooh. Ross was, ha was walking towards the dugout. He was about uh, a few feet off the mound there. He can't believe that that ball was not called for a strike. Krizik is able to draw his second walk of the ball game, and Diego Alarcon, the tie and run now for UNLV, will be up to bat here in the bottom of the second. Alarcon grounded out to a double play in his first plate appearance. So Krizik is able to draw his 28th walk of the year. Second walk of the ball game there is Ross, as he has now seen his pitch count go up to 53. Now time will be called here. And Ross, who was very close to getting out of this inning with uh, just the one run given up, but a wild pitch, and they're going to change it here for UNLV. It is not the first triple for Ryland Charles. It will be an error, an error on the center fielder, Colette. So UNLV, they have scored. These are very impressive. The Rebels have scored three runs so far and still have not gotten a hit. So 
So RBIs right now, uh, as they stand, we've got Charles with an RBI and Panero with an RBI. For Santino, he does that that, that ground out that he uh, was able to get the first run scored for UNLV. It's the 11th RBI of the year. As stop uh, long a uh, mound visit. Now this might be more of a talk here between uh, coach and umpire here. That one was very close. That uh, off-speed pitch there to Krizik. This is a uh, very, very long conversation. Uh, the home plate umpire, Timothy Resch. Called that 3-2 pitch outside for ball four. It's the fourth walk that UNLV's been able to draw. And now Diego Alarcon will be up to bat here. I mentioned for Alarcon, he's 0 for 1 on the day. Diego coming into this uh, game, 329 average. So Krizik over at first after the mound visit. First pitch, be taken high for a ball. 1 and 0 is the count. For the Spartans, uh, they will have the 7, 8, 9 hitters due up in the top of the third inning. As this one is high, this is the zone yet again. Looking at it here for Ross, uh, he's now at 55 pitches. 30 of them have been four strikes. And UNLV is just continuously grinding out at bats. Nolan Matera has thrown 61 pitches for the Rebels. There's a swing and a miss there. Alarcon trying to tie the ball game up. But missed that one as the count goes to 2-1. and one. Rebels looking for their 25th win of the year. As the next pitch, Alarcon will foul this one back out yet, yet again. And the count will go even. Two and two, two outs here with Krizik over at first. UNLV, as I mentioned, they're still looking for their first hit of the ball game. They're 0 for 5 with runners on, but still have managed to score three runs. Quite impressive for the Rebels. As Ross has set the pitch, Alarcon fights this one off yet again, and the count remains even. Two and two. For Diego, the third baseman all in the year uh, against left-handed hitters hitting 314 with two outs, just 204, though. And has been kind of the area that he has uh, struggled with along with bases loaded situation as well, 111. But with two outs, 313, as there's a swing and a miss there, strike three. But the Rebels are able to score three runs in the inning without getting a base hit. UNLV has chipped away. They're now trailing this one 5-3. To the top of the third we go here. We'll be right back on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Hunter DeRoe will lead it off here in the top of the third inning. UNLV and San Jose State currently in another battle here. 5-3 to three is the score as the first pitch will be taken for a ball. 1-0 and oh is the count here. Noah Matera back out for another inning of work. He's currently given up five runs off of six hits, one air for the Rebels. The Rebels have scored three runs without a hit so far. Very impressive for UNLV as this one will be down low for a ball. 2-0 and oh is the count. Highlighted by an error there out in center field. Jack Collette had a fly ball off the bat of Ryan and Charles go off the tip of his glove. And Charles was able to advance to third there on the air. Run scored, and then Charles scored on a wild pitch. 
This one is in there for a strike. Two and one is the count. So, you know, for UNLV, I mean, I don't think I've uh, called my fair share of games, uh, softball, baseball combined, that I've never seen a team score this many runs without a hit. As there's a high, towering drive in the left field. This ball as well. Hit going back at the wall, and it is gone. A mammoth high drive home run here for Hunter Duro. And the Spartans get a run back here in the top of the third inning. It is 6-3 San Jose State. For the first base, and that is his 11th home run of the year and his 27th or 28th RBI on this 2022 campaign. That ball just kept carrying and carrying there out into left center field past the 375 wall there. That probably just barely got over. The winds have actually kind of died down, so that was all really power there from the first baseman for the Spartans, who gets his team leading 11th home run. Akana Olasso up to bat here as the next pitch is going to be taken outside for a ball. 1-1 on as it counts. UNLV getting three runs in the bottom of the second inning. Spartans do a good job of answering back here, at least getting a run back. It's the, third, or the second home run for San Jose State, their third of the series. As this one is fouled back out of play as action in the bullpen for UNLV as uh, Noah Matera so far has uh, struggled in this outing for the sophomore. Two innings of work. Seven hits, six runs, five of them earned, two walks, and three strikeouts. Has given up a run in three straight innings, three in the first, two in the second, now one here in the third. Still nobody out as this one will be fouled out of play. And the count remains one and two. For UNLV, they will have the four, five, and six hitters do up, Zeisler, Walls, and Williams. You look at it for UNLV, they've had... A lot of base runners on the base paths here as this one, I think it did. Yep, it's going to hit there. The designated hitter, Olasso, who is hit for the second time this year. So Matera, a home run and a hit batter. And the shortstop, Theo Hardy, will be up to bat. Hardy, who was able to lay out a double in his first plate appearance and came around to score in the top of the second inning. For Hardy, that was his second double of the year. He has 15 hits, two or 16 hits now, two doubles, three triples, and a home run. So they will get the extra base hits going as the first pitch is fouled back out of play. And the count will go to 0 and 1. So what an interesting uh, line score we have for both teams. For the Spartans, six runs, seven hits, one error. For the Rebels, three runs, no hits, one error. Ethan Ross, the starting pitcher for San Jose State, just has been uh, just too wild. There are a lot of free passes. Has hit two batters uh, and hasn't been helped out defensively as well with that air there by San Jose State out in center field. As the count right now is 1-1 one one to the 9-0 hitter. Robert Hamchuk is due up next. He is 1-2 for two with an RBI hit. Next pitch. That one hits on the inside for a strike. 1-2 and two is the count here to the number 9 hole hitter. San Jose State coming into this weekend series against UNLV. They were at the sixth uh, best average, six out of seven teams in the Mount West with a 275 team average. They were third in runs scored at 236. As this one is going to be sent over to third. It'll be a tough play. Over to second for one. Return throw to first will not be in time as they get the force out at second. There is Alarcon charging on in. Fires it over to second with Williams covering for out number one. But Hardy's able to beat out the throw. Second time that... Uh, San Jose State's been able to beat out a potential fielder, double play. The left fielder, Robert Hamchuk, will be up to bat here. Sophomore, mentioned very consistent hitter for the Spartans, is one for two, an RBI hit. He sent a ground ball up the middle that scored Hardy from second. Scored one of the two runs in the top of the second for the Spartans. So Hardy over at first, first pitch on the inside. Hits there for a strike, 0-1 on is the count. Hardy at first, he's two for three on stolen base opportunities uh, so far this year. So far today uh, against Noma Terra, the Spartans are four for 11 with runners on, two for four with two outs. This one stopped there by Bajani in the dirt for a ball, one and one is the count. Well, 
Rebels who lead the conference, actually have the most wins overall. So trying to look for their 25th win. They're only, the only team in the Mount West so far with over 20 wins. As the next pitch is going to be fouled out of play. And the count will go to one and two. Rebels currently on a four-game winning streak. They beat UNR in the third game of that series, the Silver State Series last weekend to salvage at least one win. Uh, dropped two out of three, then won against Dixie State on a midweek game on Tuesday. And they've taken the first two games against San Jose State. Currently trailing this one, though, 6-3. to three, As this one is going to be sent to second. Williams on a dive, and he gets by him yet again in the center field for a base hit. Hardy stumbled there, has to dive back into second. He is safe. And another base hit here for the leadoff. Uh, leadoff hitter for San Jose State, Robert Hamchuk, who is now two for three on the day. And that will bring up James Shimashita, the uh, junior, who is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. I mentioned that's Williams now, second time that uh, Hamchuk has sent one up the middle, and Williams has made a valiant diving effort, but has just been unable to get it in the glove on the dive. So another base hit here for the Spartans. That's already eight hits so far through two and a third innings for Noah Matera. Lefty versus lefty matchup here is the first pitch. It will be taken down low for a ball, 1-0 is a count. Hardy at second, Hamchuk at first. As the Spartans trying to get some of those runs back, the UNLV scored in the bottom of the second inning. If you're just joining us, the real big hit there was by Dalton Bowling, who is due up uh, in a little bit here as this one is fouled back out of play. He's actually in the hole, McAdoo on deck. Bowling with a three-run home run off the scoreboard here at early Wilson Stadium. And got the Spartans on top three to nothing. At that point, Matera had, wasn't helped out with an error over at third and then a walk. Noah trying to get out of this inning with just the one run given up, a home run. The start off is a throw over to first. Uh, late uh, reaction there. Zeiss are covering the bag, and then everyone is safe. Duro with the solo shot, a high fly ball. I mean, just carried and carried. Had a lot of hang time on it. Went over the left center field wall for his 11th home run of the year. As the next pitch he is going to be fouled out of play yet again. One and two is the count here in the top of the third inning. Six to three is the score here on a very windy afternoon here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The first one, the wind, the first home run for the Spartans. The wind was blowing. Second one, though. Uh, it, was, it was very calm. As the next pitch is going to be taken down low, and Bajani with a good stop there. As the count will go to two and two. Obviously for Matera and for the relief pitchers for either team, actually, yeah, the big thing is just try to keep the ball on the ground. Tell you what, I don't know what it is. It's I don't know if it's reserved in the contract for the city of Las Vegas, but it's always just miserably windy every Saturday. This one is going to be sent off the end of the bat over to Adarian Williams. He'll only have one play. He'll throw it to first in time for out number two, four to three on the score sheet. As that one went off the end of the bat there of Shimashita, but he did not get a lot on it, but that helped him because the runners were able to advance a second. Williams going over to his left really only had one play. Two outs now in the inning as the number three hole hitter Charles McAdoo will be up to bat. McAdoo is 0 for 2 with a run scored. So McAdoo would like to get a base hit here. Anything that gets into the outfield has a good chance of scoring two runs. First pitch. That one down the third baseline foul. And the count will go to 0-1 here. Both UNLV baseball and UNLV softball facing off against San Jose State this weekend. Softball playing their third game uh, currently right now up in San Jose, California. They have split the first two games. UNLV baseball looking for the sweep here and trying to win five out of six against San Jose State. This one inside, and it will be taken for a ball. One-on-one is a count. And right here for Matera, this is a must must out here against uh, McAdoo, who's currently 0 for 2 uh, against Matera because Bowling is due up next, and he's 2 for 2 with a 3-run home run and a single. This one fouled back into the net. And the count will go to 1 and 2. So Hamchuk at 2nd, Hardy at 3rd. Rebels currently down by 3. 
Still looking for their first hit. So it still, it still baffles me as there's an off speed pitch. That one hits on the outside part of the plate. Strike three. And no, Matera is able to strand two runners on the base pass. But the Spartans do get a solo shot. Leadoff home run there from Hunter Duro. And San Jose State will take a 6-3 lead going into the bottom of the third here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Tomczyk on the call. Thank you for joining us here on the Mount West Network on Stadium via the YouTube uh, channel. Right to us by Learfield and by UNLV Athletics. Ethan Ross back out for another inning of work. Command has been a problem for him as he'll throw the first pitch for a ball. 0-1 is the count. And Zeisler, who is up to bat. Zeisler, who is drilled in his first plate appearance. It'll be Zeisler, Walls, and Williams due up for the Rebels. This one inside, and <laughs> Zeisler kind of has to shimmy on out of there, and the count goes to 2-0. and oh. So UNLV, they've gotten two runners on via hit, uh, hit by pitch, Charles and Zeisler. They've gotten four walks, two by Krizik, one by Williams, one by Andrade, an error off the bat of Charles in center field. This one inside, this one hits Zeisler. Zeisler flips the bat there. One time you can take it twice now. It's starting to feel a little personal between Hank Zeisler and Ethan Ross as he is hit by a pitch there. Zeisler, that is his... Ninth time that he has been hit by a pitch. Three hit batters for Ross today. All three have been left-handed hitters. And it's coming up that here will be Joey Walls. Walls, as I mentioned, uh, in a little bit of a funk uh, coming into this uh, um, into this game here. He's three for his last 23. As now we have a little stoppage play, I believe. Uh, equipment issue here for the uh, catcher, Gasolum. So Walls will be up to bat here. Third straight inning, UNLV has gotten a base runner on without a hit. Rebels have left three runners on the base pass there. 0 for 6 with runners on against Ross. Let's see if Walls can find, uh, find his groove yet again. Seen that average dip below 400. He's been such a consistent hitter for UNLV as this one will be taken high for a ball 1-0 as a count. Rebels were hoping for uh, kind of a solid pitching performance. UNLV has really given up a lot of runs over the last five games if you take away that Dixie State game as Walls sends a high, towering drive into right center field. This one's going to keep in the ballpark here. And a miscommunication on right center field. Another mishap for San Jose State there between Colette and Shimashita as Walls is just gifted a base hit here. I don't know how much the wind just kept driving that one out. It actually landed at the warning track. It just kept carrying and carrying. And so Darian Williams will be up to bat. That one lands in between. Didn't go off the glove, so we'll see if that's going to be a hit or an error. Right now, they're giving it a double for Walls. We'll wait for the – there will be any changes. We'll get that to you. But if it is for Joey Walls, that will be his 18th double of the year. My goodness, just just uh, an adventure out there. If you remember now in the, in the bottom of the second inning, Charles hit one to center field that went off the glove there of Collette. That uh, led to a run scored. Actually, the next pitch was a wild pitch that led to Charles' score. 
as uh, Ross steps off the bag there. As both bullpens have been busy so far here in this third inning, warming up. So Walls at second, Zeisler over at third. Williams up to bat here, off speed is in there for a strike. 0 1 is a count. Uh, Darian, who uh, walked in his first plate appearance, he came around and scored the first run of the ballgame for UNLV in the bottom of the second inning. The tie and run up to the plate here for the Rebels. Spartans have done their job offensively to give Ross. Uh, uh, some rooms, uh, some runs to work with here, but he is, as a Williams chases that one way out of the zone there. One and one is a count. Ross has kind of hurt himself on a hit batter here, uh, walk, and also hasn't been helped out defensively the last two innings, but uh, he's hit three batters and has uh, walked four Rebels. So the first hit of the ball game comes in the third inning off the bat of Joey Walls that lands in between uh, the center fielder, Colette and the right fielder Shimashita as this one will be fouled back into the net here in the count 0-2 to Adarian Williams. Jordan Andrade due up next here for the Rebels. Andrade walked in his first plate appearance. Zeisler over at third, Walls at second. And the next pitch. Way outside, good stop there from the catcher Gaslam uh, to another run. They've seen UNLV. Williams actually was able to advance uh, to second and third on the base pass due to uh, wild pitches there. And he came around to score after Santino Panero was able to beat out a potential inning-ending double play. One and two is the count here from Ross, the pitch, and Williams chases that one out of the zone. Strike three. Very surprised there to see Williams chasing there with Ross so wild as he is. And this will bring up Jordan Andrade. That's the fourth strikeout for Jordan Ross. Andrade. Gives him 32 on the year. As coming up to bat here for UNLV will be Jordan Andrade. Andrade who walked in his first plate appearance. He's got Zeisler over at third. Walls at second here. One out now. UNLV more important to just try to get some runs here. Chip away at this deficit. First pitch. This is outside for a ball. One and O's account. See some very close uh, pitches go against the Spartans. You remember Ross thought he had a uh, strikeout against Austin Krizik. Was starting to walk over to the dugout and had to be just hit the brakes on. It's like, whoa, that wasn't strike three. Okay, all right. As this one, they'll be taken for a strike. One one is the count there. Now Andrade kind of double checked back to the home plate umpire, wondering where uh, where that one hit in the zone. So one out here in the bottom of the third inning. UNLV. Trailing this one 6-3 with Eric Bajani due up next. Jordan Andrade up to bat the shortstop. Lefty versus righty matchup. The pitch way outside, and the count goes 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Andrade looking for another walk here. UNLV, as I mentioned, has gotten four walks so far, but has struck out four times. That's been the big thing for Ross. He's given up a lot of base runners, but... You know, it's really limited UNLV as this one's going to be sent over to short. A run will score here for the Rebels. Throw over to first will be in time. So Andrade with the RBI ground out. Zeisler will score. Heading over to third will be Walls. And it's now 6-4. to four. San Jose State on top here in the bottom of the third inning. And it's Jordan Andrade with the RBI ground out. That is his eighth RBI of the year. And now I'll bring up Eric Bajani, who's 0-for-1 with a strikeout. Bajani so far here. In this series, as I mentioned, he has been really, really good. He's now 5 for 10. He's been able to get the average going here. Would like to get a two-out hit. He swings for the fences, misses that one, and it's 0-1. We will see if Noah Matera will be back out for his fourth inning of work right now for Noah. Three innings since thrown 86 pitches, eight hits given up, six runs, five of them earned, two walks, and four strikeouts. And know for the Rebels, they would uh, – I'd like to maybe get one more inning out of him and not, ha not have to tax the bullpen because UNLV, if, as I was mentioning, they only have really one day off before they got to play two games in a row against Loyola Marymount. As Bajani goes opposite field, and it's going to go foul out of play for, out, uh, for uh, the second strike. Looking at it for the Rebels there on that uh, f Thursday night game, UNLV – who had given, uh, given up 12 runs. They used in that ball game just three pitches, though, so they didn't really 
have to tax the bullpen a lot. And then yesterday, as Ross is set here on a one and two pitch, two Bajani misses outside, two and two is the count. Yesterday, the Rebels used uh, just two pitchers. So I will say, you know, UNLV has given up uh, 19 runs in these first uh, in the first two games on fr uh, Thursday and Friday, but I haven't really had to tax the bullpen as this one misses outside. Good eye here from Bajani, who has gotten the count full now here, three and two. And we'll see now if this will be Ross's last inning, as uh, we've seen um, seen right now a couple a couple people warming up in San Jose State's bullpen. Ross looking for the strike out the pitch. Bajani will chop this one high and foul out of play. The number nine all hitter, Santino Panero, is due up next for UNLV. He is 0 for 1 with, 1 with an RBI ground out. So Rebels, four runs off of one hit and one error. Rebels were really close if that one, uh, that first hit for Walls to be another error. You know, we could have potentially have scored maybe four or five runs before their first hit. Count is full, three and two here. Ross looking for the strikeout, the payoff pitch. But Johnny's going to lace that one into left field for a base hit. Coming on to score will be Joey Walls as Bajani gets an RBI single. And UNLV has cut the deficit to one. It is six to five here in the bottom of the third inning. That is the 34th RBI for Bajani off of his 37th hit of this 2022 season. Santino Panaro. Santino Panaro will be up to bat here, the freshman. As I mentioned, got an RBI ground out in his first plate appearance. UNLV picks up their second hit. And now the go-ahead run is coming to the plate here. The number nine old hitter, Santino Panero. First pitch. High for a ball. 1-0 is the count. So in this inning, we've had a hit batter. A double that landed in between the right fielder and the center fielder. This one is fouled back out of play, and the count will go to one and one. A strikeout, an RBI ground out, and now a single in the left field. Next pitch, that one, not in there for a strike. Very close there, missed for Ross, and the count goes to two and one. So San Jose State, who has led since the top of the first inning, they were up three to nothing, then up five nothing before UNLV scored three runs in the bottom of the second. The Rebels keep fighting back here, down by one. Next pitch, that one is a defensive swing there from Panero, as Ross will sprint on over there, almost trying to win a race there between him and the number nine leader for UNLV before he flips it on to first in time or out number three. But UNLV does get two runs across the board, highlighted by a RBI single from Eric Bajani. We go to the top of the fourth. San Jose State leading this one 6-5 to five here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.
Six to five is a score here in the top of the fourth inning. This is the third game of this three-game series between UNLV and San Jose State. Rebels looking for the sweep. Spartans, as this one's going to be set in the left field for a base hit on the first pitch here. Dalton Bowling is having himself a fine Saturday afternoon here in Las Vegas. He's now three for three with a three-run home run and now two singles. As Omar Gaslam will be up to bat here. Gaslam, he is two for two, so the... The number four and five hitters for San Jose State have five of their nine hits. And here for Noah Matera, his team has been battling back, got it within one. This is a must-needed uh, zero spot for Matera, who's most likely going to be out after this inning. As this one's to be sent to third. Opportunity here for UNLV. Throw to second, 4-1. Return throw to first in time. The stretch there by Zeisler, 5-4-3, double play. UNLV, a big-time ground out there for Noah Matero as Andrade throws it to Williams over to Zeisler for the double play. That was big there for the Rebels. As you see on the instant replay, Zeisler with the stretch there at first. And that will bring up the center fielder, Jack Collette, who has had an interesting go of it uh, defensively. Had one bounce off of his glove in the uh, second inning that led to UNLV getting two runs, uh, one run off the play, and then Ryan Charles was able to advance to third and then came to score on a wild pitch and then had one as Colette showing bunt, landing between him and Shimashita there in right center field off the bat of walls. I thought it was going to be a fly ball, you know, fairly fairly deep into the gap. It landed almost at the warning track. The ball just kept carrying and carrying. As this one is going to be fouled back here. As the Spartans are very aggressive so far. They swung at the first two pitches, bowling with the single, then Gastelum with the 5-4-3 double play. So Noah Matera... You know, if he works quickly here, maybe he could work into a, a fifth inning here. UNLV does have uh, someone up in the bullpen. It looks like it is number 20, Ty Pullman, for the Rebels. So Matera trying to get out of this inning here with a, his first zero spot. As that one will miss on the outside, and the count goes to two and one. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Spartans have scored in the first three innings. UNLV has scored in the second and third inning. Matera looking for, this, uh, for the third out here as that one is fouled back out of play. And the count will go to 2-2. Two and two. Colette, the center fielder, he's 0-2 on the day, has struck out one of the four strikeouts that Matera has been able to get so far. Same, that ties him with Ethan Ross, uh, the starter for San Jose State, both have four. Matera is set, the 2-2. Two -two. In there, called strike three, and that's a nice inning there for Noah Matera, who's helped out with a double play. Very quick work there for the sophomore as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Rebels trail this one 6-5 to five here in Las Vegas, Nevada.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Tomchak on the call. Thank you for joining us here on your Saturday afternoon. Rebels currently trailing this one 6-5 to five as UNLV, after finally getting their first zero spot there yeah, off the uh, arm of Noah Matera. Back to the top of the lineup for UNLV. It will be Ryland Charles, Austin Krizik, and Diego Alarcon. Charles is 0-1 for 1 with an RBI. He's hit by a pitch, and then if you remember in that second inning, uh, sent a fly ball that got off the glove of the center fielder, uh, Colette. As Charles will take this one in there for a strike. And that one helped the lead, uh, lead uh, UNLV to get uh, two more runs in the second inning. 6-5 to five is the score. Ross back out for another inning of work. And San Jose State's bullpen is active, though. I think Ross is going to have a short leash here. He's had trouble with the command issues, has walked uh, four batters, has hit three batters, has, has hit Hank Zeisler twice. Uh, Zeisler is due up fourth. I don't think if Zeisler gets hit a third time, he's going to be very happy with that one. First time you can understand it. Second time feels a little bit personal. As the count right now is two and one. The Rebels trying to take the lead. They're down by as much as five runs uh, going into the bottom of the second inning. As the next pitch here from Ross is going to be taken on the outside or the inside ball four. So Charles is able to draw the walk there. His 17th walk that he's been able to draw the Third time he's been on the base path so far here today, and I'll bring up Austin Krizik. Krizik hasn't registered at bat. He's walked in both of his plate appearances. Krizik, who leads UNLV in this lineup today with walks this year, currently sitting at uh, 28. And Darian Williams is sitting at uh, 26. As uh, time here is coming out here, another mound visit for San Jose State, and we might have a pitching change for the Spartans. One thing that we uh, didn't get to announce, a uh, new catcher for uh, San Jose State, Matt Spear, will be behind the plate replacing Omar Gaslam, who grounded out to that double play in the uh, third in in the uh, top of the fourth inning. So we'll have a pitching change here for the Spartans. Ethan Ross, day is done as he puts the tie and run on the base pass here. We'll be right back here from early Wilson Stadium with San Jose State leading this one 6-5 to five here on the Mountain West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium. First pitching change of the ball game. It'll go to San Jose State as Ross is out. Coming into the ball game will be Joey Camerata, uh, Camerata for the Spartans, wearing number 52. 
He is a right-handed pitcher. Will go up against Austin Krizik, who has walked in both of his plate appearances today. First pitch slider hits on the outside for a strike. 0-1 is the count, so Ross will be on the hook for Charles over at first. As the Spartans, who have struggled to, on the mound this year, Team ERA coming into this weekend, 7.20. They've given up 26 runs in the first two games, already have given up five runs so far. As the next pitch, that one hits in for a strike. 0-2 is the count. So Camerata, the redshirt sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, played at Washington State uh, the last two years. We're coming over here to uh, San Jose. ERA on the year at a 4.96. Next pitch, and Krizik will foul this one out of play. Last pitch against San Diego State where he went two and a third innings, gave up two hits, one run, no earned, three walks, and a strikeout. His uh, overall stat line uh, this year as he's going up against Austin Krizik and trying to get a strikeout. For uh, Joey, he is 2-2 two and two on the year with a save. 16 and 30 innings pitch. He's given up 10 runs. Nine of them earn, as I mentioned, a 4 point, actually 9-6 ERA. 15 hits, 18 walks, and 17 strikeouts as that one's taken down low for a ball. 1-2 and two is the count. He's given up two doubles, four home runs. He's had three wild pitches and has hit three batters. Well, this is a uh, San Jose State team. One thing that has, has hurt them as well They've given up a lot of walks. They're last in the Mount West in, in walks. As Krizik on a line there in the left field. Oh, it got to go back as Charles. A chance here for a double play. He's hustling it on over. Throw to first. It's bounced. And not picked out there by the first baseman, uh, Dora. Adura, my, Duro, my apologies. And very, very uh, big there for UNLV as Diego Alarcon will be up to bat here for the Rebels as Charles. Trying to get on the hit and run there, as you see there on the instant replay. That was almost, I mean, close if uh, Duro is able to uh, pick that one there. But uh, Krizik, good contact on a line, but right at the uh, left fielder for San Jose State Hamchuk. So Diego Alarcon will be up to bat here. Charles still at first. Camarada. First pitch will be taken down low for a ball. 1-0 and is the count here. Finish out the line score here for Ethan Ross. Three innings of work. He threw 88 pitches, gave up two hits, five runs, four earned, five walks, four strikeouts. As I mentioned, he's on the hook there for Charles over at first. Diego on the day is 0-2 with a strikeout. Alarcon was on a 14-game hitting streak before going hitless against Dixie State uh, earlier this week as he will send that one foul. And the count will go to 1-1. One Alarcon, the senior from California, came in with the most runs scored in the Mountain West. He had score, uh, scored, my apologies, 50 runs. And is also fourth in the Mountain West in RBIs. I had to get an RBI here to potentially tie the ball game up. San Jose State leading this one 6-5. to five. They led 5 nothing, but UNLV has scored five runs here in the bottom of the second and bottom of the third. As the next pitch is fouled back, three in the second, two in the third trying to score for the third straight inning. As Alarcon found that one back, the count one and two. With runners on when they were facing off against Ross, UNLV was two for 11 and with two outs, one for five. The Rebels only have two hits in the ball game, a double by Walls and then a line drive single by Eric Bajani. Camerata set, the next pitch is outside. Could stop there by Alarcon. Who almost went around, and the count will go to two and two as Camarada was trying to hit that slider away, could not get uh, Diego to chase. So Camarada on the mound here in relief work, trying to preserve this lead. He's able to get a line out to left. The two two, and that one a well hit ball to left field, going back at the wall, and it's going to go off the wall. Rounding second and going to third will be Charles. Heading over to second will be Diego Alarcon, and it's going to be a one-out double as Alarcon on a line there. Didn't get enough elevation, but had plenty of power on that one, as you see on the instant replay. Alarcon just kept going and going and then went over the head there of Hamchuk out in left field. So it's a double there for Alarcon. That'll be his 12th double of the year. 
Going over to third was Charles, and Alarcon now at second, so a go-ahead run at second for UNLV. Hank Zeisler will be up to bat here. Zeisler would like for Camerata to throw the ball over the plate. He has been drilled twice. Drilled on the first pitch there from Ross, and then it took a couple pitches before Zeisler was drilled on the arm yet again. Hank, the power first baseman, wearing number 23. Runners at second and third here, one out. Camerata set. The next first pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1 is a count. For Zeisler on the year uh, against left-handed pitchers, hitting 455 against right-handed hitters, 402. Runners on base, 455. He's had a really, really impressive season for the Rebels as the next pitch. And that went down the left field line, pushing, and it will go foul. It actually had home run distance here for Zeisler. It went over the wall there. As the wind's really starting to blow uh, out strong here, going from right to left. So on left field, on that left center field area, we've seen both home runs today in that uh, area for the Spartans, Bowling and uh, Duro. Bowling with a rocket shot that banged off the scoreboard. Duro just sent a mile-high fly ball that got over the uh, left center field wall. Zeisler so trying to give UNLV the lead here as he sends this one on a line, and he gets through for a base hit. Charles will score. Alarcon is going to be waved home. The throw will go to second, and UNLV off the bat there of Hank Zeisler. The Rebels take a 7-6 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning as it gets by the diving second baseman, McAdoo, into right field. And for Zeisler, that is RBI number 42 and 43 on the year off of his 54th hit of this 2022 campaign. So now for UNLV, for Noah Matera, after a quick work of it through, the, uh, through that fourth inning, may have a chance to go out in the fifth and potentially qualify for the win as Joey Walls will be up to bat. Walls got the first hit for UNLV in the last inning. A... As Wall is showing bunt here, is going to be taken for a strike. 0 1 is the count. Wall sent a high fly ball in a right center field that was able to land in between Colette and Shimashita. Walls with a double and then was able to come around and score. He's 1 for 2. The Rebels, the fourth hit of the ball game for UNLV off the bat of Hank Zeisler, scores 2. The Rebels have their first lead, 7 to 6. This one in there for a strike. And 0 2 is the count here to Walls. Joey, the right fielder. So far this year against right-handed pitchers, it's actually been better against right-handers than left-handers. 400 average even for Walls at 389 uh, against left-handers. Camerata is set, and it gets a swing and a miss there as Walls chases that one in the dirt for strikeout. For the strikeout, two outs now here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Adarian Williams will be up to bat here for the Rebels. Zeisler over at first, Williams up to bat here. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout is Williams. Chased uh, in his last plate appearance, a pitch out of the zone. MLB has now struck out five times so far. Camerata with his first uh, strikeout in relief work here. So for Ross, you can uh, put an end to his uh, stat line here today as the first pitch to Williams is in there for a strike. 0 1 is a count. Ross went three innings, gave up two hits, six runs, five of them earned, five walks, and four strikeouts. Camerata now on the hook to be the losing pitcher now as that uh, Hank Zeisler was able to s score um, as Williams will foul this one back out of play. Was able to score Diego Alarcon who doubled uh, to left field. And now Noah Matera. You know, you know these bullpen is working. I think Matera might get a start just like Ross did in this uh, fourth inning, but any slight... Uh, uh, trouble that Matera will, will get into, I think, head coach Stan Stolte for UNLV will uh, take him out. As Williams talking it over there with Kevin Higgins, the third base coach. Zeisler over at first. The Rebels leading this one 7-6. Rebels have now scored, scored 13 runs in the first game, 13 runs in the second game, now seven runs overall. 33 runs. Or the Rebels this weekend. I mean, just continues to show why they were not only the best hitting team in the Mount West, but one of the best hitting teams in the country. 
This one, Williams will send a chopper over to second. McAdoo has it. Throw to first will be in time, and that will end the bottom of the fourth inning. But the Rebels strike yet again off the bat of Hank Zeisler. A two-run single in the right field, and the Rebels take a 7-6 lead as we go to the top of the fifth here at Early Wilson Stadium on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Well, we thought uh, Noah Matera might have a chance here in the fifth inning. We were mistaken. A new pitcher for UNLV, and it will be Hayden Nierman. We'll get an opportunity here in the top of the fifth, but the Rebels now leading it 7-6 to six as the first pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1 is the count as Hunter Duro will be up to bat. Duro, who hit a solo home run in his last plate appearance. Well, swing and miss at that one, and the count goes to 0-2. He is 1-for-1 one one with a walk. That home run for him for the first baseman for San Jose State, was his 11th of the year. As Hayden Nierman up uh, on the, in the mound here for UNLV. We'll get an opportunity to try to get a quick 1-2-3 inning and get the bats back open uh, back up for the Rebels. This one gets away, and the count will go to 1-2. and two. For Nierman, who has pitched, uh, this is the second time that he has appeared in this series against San Jose State. He went uh, an inning and a third on Thursday. He gave up six hits, four runs, four earned. He's looking to kind of build the confidence as well. As this one's going to be sent to second. Darian Williams is over to his right. The throw to first will be in time for out number one. Four to three on the score sheet. One out here in the top of the fifth inning. Uh, let's go back though for Nierman who started out in his first uh, was re looking really good uh, out of the uh, pen. He gave up a one earned run in his first appearance, then went five straight games without giving up an earned run. But since then, he gave up one against Arizona State, two against New Mexico, three against UNR, uh, actually three in back-to-back -back appearances against UNR, and then four against San Jose State. So he's a pitcher for UNLV that they would like to, for him to kind of get back, uh, get the confidence back going. Obviously, he's gotten his first uh, right. Well, that one goes right back to him. He'll flip it on over to first in time. So he gets a ground out to a Darian Williams, and this one a comebacker. Nice play there by Nierman for out number two as that uh, retires the designated hitter uh, for San Jose State, Olasso. And they'll bring up the number nine old hitter, Theo Hardy. Hardy is one for two, doubled in his first plate appearance. Very nifty play there for Nierman, who... I'll get you his uh, stat line so far this season. He's 1-0 with four saves. Uh, current ERA, though, is at 6.52. 19 and a third innings pitch. He's given up 16 runs. 14 of them have been earned as the first pitch is fouled back. The count goes to 0-1. 27 hits overall given up. Four walks to 15 strikeouts. Four doubles, three wild pitches, and he's hit three batters. 
UNLV, which got a two-run single from Hank Zeisler to give the Rebels the lead there in the bottom of the fourth inning. They will have Andrade, Bajani, and Panero do up in the bottom of the fifth inning. These seven, eight, nine hitters, as there's a swing and a miss there. One and two is the count as Hardy in danger of striking out here. So the final uh, stat line for Noah Matera didn't get off to a good start, but was able, most importantly, though, get a, a zero spot in the fourth inning, keep, get UNLV up to bat here uh, with their hot bats as this one has popped up foul out of play, and the Rebels were able to take the lead. The wind's kind of playing some tricks here. Actually lands a lot closer to the wall than I thought it was going to, but it's out of play. And count now one and two. For Matera, four innings of work. He threw 92 pitches, gave up nine hits, six runs, five earned, two walks, and five strikeouts. Yemen right now with a one-two pitch, looking for the strikeout, and he'll get a little chopper that will go foul out of play. Yemen wearing number 16 for UNLV, a junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, check swing. Did he go around? He did, yes. The home plate umpire actually says yes. And that is going to be a strikeout there for Nearman, and that will end the inning, a 1-2-3 inning for Hayden Nearman out of the pen, and the Rebels will be up to bat here in the bottom of the fifth oh, inning. Man. Rebels have scored in three straight innings. They'll try to make it four. Coming up next here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jordan Andrade will lead it off here for the Rebels. As we're in the bottom of the fifth, UNLV leading it 7-6. The Rebels were trailing 5-0 going into the bottom of the second. And have outscored the Spartans in that span 7-1. Camerata back out for another inning of work. Joey is set. The first pitch, slider, hits on the outside for a strike. 0-1 is the count. I'd like to give a, a big congrats to UNLV softball winning today. Two to nothing, winning the series against San Jose State. As Cameron has set the 0-1 pitch in there for a strike going to. And also for Jenny Bressler, who picked up another no-hitter uh, today, striking out 12 batters. Only walked one, one batter. was that close from getting another perfect game as well. So congratulations to Jenny and UNLV softball for a big series win. UNLV Baseball looking for a sweep here against San Jose State. They won the first game 13-12 on Thursday night, 13-7 last night. And today they're on top 7-6. To Another high-scoring performance for the Rebels. Came in averaging uh, about 9-10 to 10 runs per game in the series. It's going to continue to climb, scoring 13 in the first two games as this one has popped up down the right field line. A chance here for San Jose State, but they can't track it down as it lands foul. And the count 1 and 2 here. To Jordan Andrade, the shortstop, who is 0 for 1 with an RBI ground out and also has a walk. It's Andrade, Bajani, and Panero for the Rebels here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Hey, Nearman coming out of the pen. Very effective. 11 pitches, eight of them for strikes. Was able to get a strikeout and two ground outs. One that come back right to him. Nice play there by Nearman. They were able to get the 1 2 3 inning, and the Rebels have gotten two straight scoreless innings one by Matera and this one by Nearman. This one high and gets off the glove there of Spears. A uh, Spear, my apologies, the new catcher who checked in last inning for San Jose State, replacing Omar Gastelum. Gastelum went two for three, but they ground out to a double play. Andrade, currently right now with the count two and two here. Camerata set the pitch. 
down low. Good eye there from Andrade. UNLV been able to draw five walks today. They came in to the series against San Jose State, leading the Mountain West in walks drawn, and were second in hit by pitch. Uh, that might improve with the three batters that Ethan Ross hit, two by Zeisler and one off the uh, once to Ryland Charles. Andrade found that one off the count. Three and two here to the shortstop. Andrade's had a very productive series. He is five for nine and obviously got an RBI today. The payoff pitch. Misses high and outside. Ball four. So UNLV, another walk there on Andrade. is able to get his second walk of the ballgame. That ties him with Krizik. The most walks today. Eric Bajani will be up to bat. Bajani roped a line drive single for a base hit, an RBI single to be in fact, back in his last plate appearance. Bajani one for two, that RBI for him was his 34th of the year as the Rebels trying to pad their lead here as they're up by one. As I mentioned, they have outscored the Spartans since the bottom of the second inning, seven to one. Spartans were up top five to nothing, but could not hold on to the lead. As Bajani swings and misses at that one, 0-1 is a count. San Jose State, a loss today will put them at 500, not only overall in this 2022 campaign, but also in conference play. They're currently sitting 18-17, and 9-8 and eight in the Mount West after a big sweep against San Diego State last weekend. Up the, Spart uh, the Aztecs, San Diego State is 3-14 and 14 in conference play, while UNLV and the Mount West leaders throw back over to first. Andrade back there safe. UNLV 14-3. and three. Their three losses in conference play was to the Spartans uh, last month. And then two games to UNR, though UNLV will say they should have won two. It definitely should have won the first game of the series. Blew the lead in the ninth inning and lost in extra innings. And we'll see if the Rebels can hold on to a lead here today. As Bajani gets underneath this one. It's a mile-high pop-up here over on the right-hand side of the field. The wind's going to play some tricks here, and the second baseman, McAdoo, has it for out number one. Seen to be a venture out in right, field, right center field for Colette and Shimashita. And that will bring up the number nine old hitter, Santino Panero. Santino Panaro. Santino on the day is 0 for 2 with an RBI ground out. Okay, lefty versus righty matchup here between him and Joey, uh, Joey uh, Camerata. Camerata so far is in line for the loss after he gave up the go-ahead run. As that one is in there for a strike, 0-1 is the count. You know, the four hits so far, it took the Rebels uh, to the third inning to get their first hit, and it was a weird one that landed in between the, the right fielder and center fielder for the Spartans. You know, he scored their first three runs without getting a hit, which was uh, quite impressive. I haven't seen that feat before. And as the next pitch. This one into the gap in the left field. This ball is well hit. Going over to his left, though, is the left fielder, Hamchuk, and he's able to clamp it down for out number two. Had to travel a long way to Robert Hamchuk, who's able to take Got away a potential fielder. extra base hit there off the bat there of the oh. designated hitter for the Rebels. As you see there on the instant replay, long way to go there for Hamchuk, as Ryland Charles will be up to bat for the Rebels. Charles is 0 for 1, has scored two runs. He has walked, he's been hit by a pitch, and he's reached on an error. So he's reached base all three times. He'll improve his on-base percentage. He came in on-base percentage at 444. First pitch here to Charles. Misses on the outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count. So after the leadoff walk to Jordan Andrade, Bajani popped up to second in the line drive uh, by Santino Panero. Let's see if Charles can get anything going with two outs here. UNLV today with two outs. They are 1-4-6. Austin Krizik due up next here for the Rebels if Charles can keep this inning alive. Next pitch. High strike. 1-1 one one is the count. Charles on the year with uh, two outs hitting at 255. That's really the only area where he has not been as consistent Against left-handed hitters, right-handed hitters, hitters, he's over 350. Lead off, he's uh, 500. Base is loaded, 571. As he gets underneath this one, it's over on the left-hand side. Into shallow left field. The shortstop, Hardy, has it. He'll clamp it down 
for out number three. So the Spartans are finally able to stop UNLV's scoring run there as they put up a zero spot for the first time since the bottom of the first inning. We go to the top of the six. Rebels lead this one seven to six here on the Mountain West Network on Stadium. Top of the six here at Early Wilson Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wyatt Top Jack on the call. Thank you for tuning in on your Saturday afternoon, wherever you're watching here. Mount West Network Stadium provided to us by UNLV Athletics via the YouTube channel and by Learfield as the first pitch here in the top of the sixth inning is an off-speed pitch that gets away from Hayden Nierman as that one will hit Robert Hamchuk. And that is going to be another hit better in this ball game for both teams. Uh, the pitchers have had a little bit of trouble with the command issue. Ethan Ross, who hit three UNLV batters. That one uh, gets the leadoff hitter for the Spartans, so the tying run is on the base paths here as James Shimashita will be up to bat. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. First pitch, that one's going to miss on the outside for a ball. 1-0 and is the count. So UNLV has been able to hold the Spartans to zero runs here in the last two innings. Uh, Matera, who gave up a single in the fourth inning, was able to erase that with a double play. And then Nierman was able to get a nice 1-2-3 inning as he throws that one in there for a strike. 1-1 one and one is the count here. So Hamchuk over at first. He had been 2 for 3. Really, the, the hitter that uh, UNLV would like to avoid with runners on the base pass is Dalton Bowling. You know, we would love to get a uh, double play here to potentially have Bowling come up in the uh, seventh inning with nobody on. Due up next here is Charles McAdoo. Rebels who had scored in the second, third, and fourth inning, but were denied there in the fifth inning. As this one's going to be over to second. Williams has it. Little bobble there. Throw to second for one. Return throw to first will not be in time. They did get the ground out. Williams, though, I think had a little bit of uh, trouble there trying to transfer the ball over to Andrade covering second. They do get the force out for out number one. As safe there at first is Shimashita, who's able to beat out the potential double play as McAdoo will be up to bat. Charles McAdoo, the second baseman. He's 0 for 3. Second baseman, Charles McAdoo. He has struck out and has scored a run. So Shimashita over at first has not had any stolen bases so far this year. First pitch here by Nierman is popped up in the air. Over on the right-hand side of the field, who wants it? It's going to be Hank Zeisler, and it was almost taken out there by Darian Williams, who tripped over his feet a couple times there. Almost took out Zeisler. Zeisler's able to get the uh, out there for number, out number two. A very adventurous uh, pop-up there on the right-hand right side of the infield for the Rebels. And that will bring up Dalton Bowling. Bowling has had himself a fine game. He is three for three. Got the scoring going for the Spartans all the way back in the top of the first inning. A three-run bomb that, that uh, banged off the scoreboard here at early Wilson Stadium. Spartans were unable to preserve that lead. Actually got up to 5 nothing. but as I mentioned, for UNLV, they've scored, uh, outscored the Spartans 7-1 uh, to one here since the bottom of the second inning. Another throwback over to first there. Quick uh, pickoff move there from Yearman, who's looking for another zero spot out of the, out of the pen for the Rebels. And he does have, looks like they have one guy standing up, but I don't see any throwing going on. This one is going to be taken down low for a ball. 1-0 is the count here. As Bowling, the sophomore, came in batting 287. 
in the series. He was four for nine, so he's really had a, a nice series against the Rebels. Last four games, he had been seven for 17. Three of those games, multi-hit games, make it now four as he's really so he's just been seeing the ball well as he right now is in a hitter's count here. 2-0 and is the count. Shibashita over at first. Sitting with start went off with a uh, leadoff hit by pitch. Robert Hamchuk was hit on his uh, left leg. This one is going to be a grounder down the third baseline. Foul. 7-6, to six, UNLV leading it here in the top of the sixth inning. Rebels leading the Mount West, trying to win the Mount West regular season championship. As you can see now, big, big gust of winds. I mean, it is blowing straight out into center field, so anything that gets in the jet stream, it could carry for a long way. It's, it's important here for Nierman to try to keep this ball on the ground. Two and one is a count here. Two, Bowling already has one home run so far here today. This one, a little low there, and the count goes to three and one. Matt Spear is due up next, who came in as a defensive replacement for Omar Gastelum, who was uh, pulled. Don't know why, though, uh, for Gastelum. Don't know if it was planned, but he was two for three. He was hitting the ball well. As this one, high into the air in the right field. This ball is well hit. It is carrying and will die out at the warning track there as Walls will make the catch, and that will end the inning as the Spartans get a runner on the base pass, but nothing across the board. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. UNLV leading this one 7-6 to six here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Austin Krizik will lead it off here in the bottom of the sixth inning here at Early Wilson Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Rebels looking for the sweep against San Jose State. They lead it 7-6. to six. And Joey Camerata back out for another inning of work. First pitch here in the bottom of the sixth. Two Krizik is in there for a strike. 0-1 is a count. Austin is 0-1. for 1, Has walked in two of his three plate appearances. It will be Krizik, Alarcon, and Hank Zeisler do up. Zeisler with the go-ahead hit. Had a two-run single in the bottom of the fourth inning. That gave UNLV a 7-6 lead, and they've been able to hold on to it as Krizik swings and misses to that one. As Nierman has been really good out of the pen here for the Rebels. Hayden so far, two innings of work, 22 pitches thrown, hasn't given up a hit, no walks, and has gotten a strikeout. Did hit a batter, but was able to strand the runner over at first. Joey Wall has been a nice play. As, ooh, close one there as uh, Timothy Rush did not uh, ring up there Austin Krizik. A couple close pitches for San Jose State today that they haven't been able to get the benefit of the call. Count right now, one and two here. To Krizik, the sophomore batting 371 on the year. Local product here from Las Vegas, Nevada. Who has now gotten a walk in five straight games. It's currently on a 10 game hitting streak. We'd like to improve on that one here. You know, if he just four hits so far, but they have just been able to Generate runs whichever way they can, as that one way outside, and the count goes to two and two. See the Rebels, looks like they got some activity out in the bullpen here, but 
way Hayden Nierman is going, he could potentially try to get uh, a third inning here. The Rebels haven't used a lot of pitchers so far. They've given up a lot of runs so far this series, but haven't really had to tax the bullpen. As Krizik late defensive swing there, and it'll go foul out of play. Count still even, two and two. For San Jose State, to currently right now are four and six on their 11-game road trip here. It's the final game of their, their road trip. As the next pitch here to Krizik will be taken high, ball three. After this uh, game against UNLV, they will be back at home to face Santa Clara University on April 19th before having a three-game series against the in-state rivals for UNLV, the UNR Wolfpack. Krizik swings and misses at that one. Strike three, so Austin set down on strikes here to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning, and they'll bring up Diego Alarcon. Alarcon is one for three with a run scored so far here today and a strikeout. Diego will try to get something going here with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rebels clinging on to a one-run lead. And we've seen in this series, uh, leads are not uh, are not safe, no matter what. And Rebels who are looking to kind of also another area that they want to improve on in the pitching is they've, they've blown a lot of uh, leads as of late. Alarcon swings and fouls this one back out of play, and the count will go to 0-2. Hank Zeisler due up next here for the Rebels. Joey Walls is in the hole if... Uh, Tyler Connors, Zeisler can get on the base path. Camerata looking for back-to-back -back strikeouts. The pitch a little bit inside there, and the count will go to one and two. So we've seen stretches so far here for both teams that they've scored in three straight innings for San Jose State. Three in the first, two in the second, one in the third for the Rebels. As this one's going to be popped up into the air in a shallow left field. This has a chance to land, and it will for a base hit. Alarcon is able to muscle that one into left field for a one-out hit, his second hit of the ball game, and number five for UNLV here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And that will bring up Hank Zeisler. Zeisler, who is one for one, a two-run single in the bottom of the fourth inning, was was glad to face uh, Joey, Joey Camerata there uh, in the fourth inning. Not only, you know, Opportunity with the base was runners on the base pass, but uh, he had been plunked twice by Ethan Ross in his first two plate appearances. So Zeisler will have an opportunity here with a runner on first and one out. Try to come up with another clutch hit here to give UNLV some insurance runs. Camerata has set the next pitch inside, almost hits Zeisler for the third time. 1 0 is the count here to Hank. Wearing number 23. A senior who, I mean, near the top of the Mount West in a lot of categories. He's first in batting average, second in slugging, first in on-base percentage, third in runs scored. As that one misses outside, 2-0 and is the count. He's tied for third in hits. RBIs are sitting at third. Doubles are sitting at six. Triples sitting at tied for first. As, as Eisler has just been uh, absolutely phenomenal in the uh, number four hole spot. Uh, filling a big void there um, for, uh, for UNLV, Jack Thomas-Wold. Uh, who was a very good first baseman as well for the Rebels. You know, he's had some really good power uh, first baseman. You remember Nick Ames was uh, just eight home runs uh, in his UNLV career as that one misses on the outside, and the count goes to 3-0. and So Camerata, who almost hit Zeisler there, tried to work the outside and can't hit the zone. So the count is 3-0 and here. Hank trying to get on the base paths for the fourth time, this time via a walk. 7-6, UNLV leading it here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rebels looking for their 25th win of the year. This one gets away from the catcher. It is going to be called a strike. As going over to second will be Alarcon. That one, uh, wow, I can't believe that was okay. I, 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 it must have been a very bad mix-up there between Camerata and Spear, the catcher, that got off his glove, but the home plate umpire called it a strike. I didn't think that was, was close there, but... Uh, well, it does, it does help UNLV put a runner in scoring position here with the count 3-1 and one here for Zeisler, one of the best hitters in this lineup. Joey Walls due up next. Zeisler trying to get an RBI here to give UNLV a two-run lead. The pitch. That one is going to be called now ball four. So Zeisler is on base for the fourth time in this ball game. First time he has been able to draw a walk. The 22nd time he's been able to draw the free pass. Joey Walls will be up to bat here. Walls is one for three. 
He's hit a double and landed in between the right fielder and center fielder for San Jose State, but has struck out in his two other plate appearances as time will be called here, and I believe we're going to have a pitching change for the Spartans as Joey Camerata, who did a good job of uh, kind of slowing down this UNLV team overall right now, two and a third. He's given up three hits, one run, one earned, two walks, and two strikeouts. But uh, I think that his relief appearance will be done here. He's currently sitting at 49 pitches. And if it is, it's a, it's a, a good outing here for uh, Camerata out of the pen, and he will be heading to the dugout. Pitching change here for the Spartans. We'll go to a quick break here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Rebels trying to threaten here. They are leading it 7-6 with two on and one out in the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back here from early Wilson Stadium. Pitching change here for San Jose State will be number 44, Darren Jansen. The junior will go up against Joey Walls here, two on with one out. As the Rebels trying to add some insurance runs here in the bottom of the sixth inning, they lead it seven to six. Walls, who is one for three with two strikeouts, first pitch. Joey will take that one down low for a ball. One and no is a count. For Jansen coming out of the pen here. So far this year, 5-2 and two is his record with a save. He has pitched 31 in, thir in a third innings. He's given up 22 runs. 18 of them have been earned. ERA sitting at 5.17. 31 hits given up, 15 walks to 27 strikeouts. He has thrown four wild pitches and has hit five batters. As This one is in there for a strike. 1-1 one one is a count. He's only given up one home run in his 31 innings of work. This is his uh, first appearance since uh, Thursday night. He faced off against UNLV. In an inning of work, he gave up three hits, three runs. Two of them were earned, two walks, and two strikeouts. So we'll like to get a zero spot here to keep this a one-run deficit for his team. Wall swings and misses at that one. And Joey right now in danger of striking out for the third time in this ballgame. Count is one and two here to the right fielder who made a nice play in the top of the sixth inning on a fly ball with the way the wind is going here at Early Wilson. It is an adventure for everybody in the outfield. Alarcon is over at second. Zeisler over at first. Jansen looking for the strikeout. 
And check swing. Good stop there by uh, Joey Walls. And a good stop there by Spear behind the plate. Count two and two here. One out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Alarcon with a bloop single in the left field. And then Zeisler with a walk after Krizik was retired on strikes for the first out. Walls trying to get a big hit here. And absolutely phenomenal this year. Part of this red-hot UNLV lineup. Always oh, swings and misses at that one. And Walls has now struck it out three times in this ball game. And now we'll take a two-out hit here for UNLV to try to get something across the board. It will be a Darian Williams. Williams is looking for his first hit. He is 0 for 2. Has a walk and has scored a run. Has also struck out. So Walls right now, three strikeouts. Seven strikeouts overall. Uh, for the San Jose State pitching staff. For Walls, he has now struck out 42 times this year. That is the most in this UNLV lineup. So Darian will try to get a two-out hit here. Rebels so far today are one for seven with two outs. Williams late on that one, swing and a miss for a strike. 0-1 oh is a count. Uh, with runners on today, UNLV is four for 19. Actually, make that, sorry, four for 20. Uh, they found a way to score seven runs here. And have, currently have a one-run lead. It's 7-6. to six. Rebels getting a two-run single by Hank Zeisler in the bottom of the fourth inning. That has been the go-ahead go ahead hit so far. This one inside. A little bit of a tie-up there. As it looked like Spear was going to his right. Had to come back with his glove to the left-hand side there. And is able to keep that one in front of him. He seen a few wild pitches, although that came uh, from the starting pitcher, Ethan Ross, for San Jose State. Now Spear will come out here to talk to Jansen. Right now, the uh, we can't close the uh, line score for Camerata. He's currently on the hook for runners at second and third. Right now, two and a third innings. He's given a, he's thrown 49 pitches, three hits, one run, one earned, two walks, and two strikeouts. Right now, the count is one and one. Two outs here for Adarian Williams. Williams, a junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's got an RBI in 11 straight games. I'd like to get an RBI here. And his first base hit, Jordan Andrade due up next if Williams can keep this inning alive. He had a late swing there, and he fouls it back out of play. Count one and two here to Adarian. Williams, who came into this weekend series, having the ninth best average in the Mount West. Slugging was at eighth. On base percentage, eighth. Hits, seventh most. RBIs first. Triples tied for first. And walks at second. Darian with 48 RBIs in this UNLV lineup. And you look at it, that's the number six hole hitter that has the most line, uh, most RBIs uh, for UNLV. It just goes to show just how the depth, one through nine, for this uh, lineup for head coach Stan Stolte. UNLV back in 2019, they went 26 and 26, 14 and 16 in conference play in 2020. In the COVID shortened year, they went 6 and 11 last year, 20 and 13. 15 and 12. They're looking for their 25th win of the year. As Williams checks swing, good eye. That one down low and a good stop there by Spear behind the plate. Count two and two here with Alarcon over at second, Zeisler over at first. Adarian so far this year with two outs, hitting a very respectable 373. It's right handed hitters 349 against left handed hitters 333. Runners on base, 396. A big reason why he leads them out west in RBIs. The 2-2 pitch. Williams fouls this one back into the net. And the count remained the same. Six runs for the Spartans off a of nine hits, one error for UNLV. Seven runs off a of five hits, one error. And error for UNLV came back in the first inning. Helped lead to a three-run home run for Bowling. And then the error for the Spartans came back in the second inning to help UNLV get some runs as well. So both errors have been costly for uh, both teams. Jansen is set here looking for the strikeout. The pitch. Williams fouls this one back off yet again. Good battle between Darian Williams and Darren Jansen. Second batter Jansen is facing. He's able to get uh, Joey Walls a strikeout. As I mentioned Jordan Andrade do up next here. Eric Bajani is in the hole. Rebels, I mentioned five hits. Two of them off the bat of Diego Alarcon. One by Zeisler, one by Walls, and one by Bajani.
Jansen has set the pitch. Williams swings and misses at that one. It was dropped there by Spear. He was able to tag Williams and out of the pen there. Jansen is able to get back-to-back -back strikeouts on Joey Walls and Adarian Williams as the Rebels strand two. We go to the top of the seventh inning. UNLV clinging on to a one-run lead. It's 7-6 to six here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. We're in the top of the seventh inning here at Early Wilson Stadium. Why, Tom Check on the call. Thank you for joining us here on the Mount West Network on Stadium and also on the YouTube broadcast provided to us by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. UNLV will have a new pitcher here as the first pitch by Connor Woods is right down the middle for a strike. 0 1 is the count. Woods will be facing off against Matt Spear. Spear will have his uh, first plate appearance after replacing uh, Gaslam, who ground out to a double play in his last plate appearance. And then uh, Spear came in. The next inning, Gaslam was two for three with an RBI. As Woods out here for UNLV after a very impressive uh, relief appearance for Hayden Nierman. Woods is set. The next pitch is fouled back into the net. Count goes to one and two. For Nierman, two innings through 22 pitches. No hits, given up, no walks, and a strikeout. Very effective and good to see Nierman get that uh, confidence boost back up after he had a few uh, rough outings in a row. For Woods, this is another player for UNLV who would like to get a nice uh, relief outing and, and kind of get back uh, his uh, mojo as this one down low, 2-2 two two is the count. He's 1-0 on the year with a save. Nine in the third innings, he's given up nine runs. All of them earn 8.68 ERA. It, eight hits given up, three walks to five strikeouts. A lot of those, well, actually all of those, all but one, is this one high up into the air into center field. Coming on in is Charles, and he'll clamp it down for out number one. So Woods, good start here. I mentioned his last outing against UNR back on April 9th. He went two and a thirds, gave up six hits, eight runs. All of them were earned. A strikeout, he gave up a double, a triple, and a home run and hit fielder. three batters. So yeah. well, it's, that's another another pitcher for UNLV. Hey, kind of get yourself maybe an inning or two of nice relief work, kind of get you back back on, on the right path as uh, Jack Collette will be up to bat here. First pitch misses on the outside for a ball. One and is the count. UNLV, which has been held scoreless here the last couple innings. Got runners on uh, the base paths. They got runners on second and first with one out, but back-to-back -back strikeouts. Walls and Williams struck out as Woods will take this one or throw this one in there for a strike. One and one is the count here. The center fielder, Colette, who is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Woods is set, and this one misses on the outside. Connor, who is a uh, fifth-year senior, getting that extra year of eligibility due to the uh, – Pause uh, back in 2020, actually the, the cancellation of the 2020 season due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as there's a swing and a miss there. So Woods making the most of it here for his fifth year at UNLV.
career ERA or in those four years at 5.71 as this one is going to be sent to third and it gets by Alarcon over there at third on the backhand making the turn and going to second is a center fielder play at second will not be in time as Colette is able to get a one out double there as it went by Diego Alarcon trying to make a tough play there down the third baseline as you see there on the instant replay opposite field shot as Alarcon Made a valiant effort there, but just unable to keep that one in front of him. And now the tie and run is in scoring position here for the Spartans. As that will bring up Hunter Duro. Duro, who has the power in this uh, lineup for San Jose State. 11 home runs on the year, including one today. A solo shot against Noah Matera. It came back into the third inning. It was a high, I mean, a mile high fly ball that just kept carrying and carrying out into left center field. Just able to sneak over the wall for the home run. And two home runs so far today here for the Spartans. None for UNLV. UNLV has been uh, relying on the long ball in the first two games in this series. So Woods looking for the strikeout here. And nope, this, gonna, this one's going to get away there, Bajani. And on the first pitch there, Woods, a wild pitch. And the runner will advance to third, Colette. It's a big time mistake there for Connor Woods. That one got away from Eric Bajani. Spartans trying to tie this ball game up here. They haven't scored since the third inning. No Matera got a scoreless top of the fourth, and then two innings of great relief work from Hayden Nearman. Now Woods got the first out, but a double and a wild pitch here. This one will be taken high for a ball one and one is or two and those count. Lasso do up next here for the Spartans as San Jose State trying to salvage one game out of this series as this one will be taken for a ball and the count goes 3-0 here. Woods, who last year uh, in four appearances was 2-0, was he had a .71 ERA. Went 12 and two-thirds innings as he's able to hit that one for a strike. He has... Uh, Thrown a lot of innings in his UNLV career. has been a reliant uh, bullpen option for Stan Stulte. I like to work his magic here and strand that runner at third with one out. The 3-1 pitch. Misses outside, ball four. Not the worst thing in the world. It does uh, give you an opportunity for a double play. But the end will be the go-ahead run, though, at first. And coming up to that here will be McKenna Olasso. Olasso. Olasso, the freshman, is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. As a little bit of instructions there for San Jose State. Uh, here, maybe we'll see what they try to do. I wouldn't be surprised here. Let's see with, uh, well, yeah, I would be surprised if they would try to pull off a steal, try to get a deke, or to go to second, uh, get UNLV to try to throw to second here as the first pitch. This is on the outside for a ball, 1-0 is the count. So the Rebels who have left eight runners on the base pass for the Spartans, they've left seven, but UNLV just hasn't been able to get some. Uh, have left, it got a lot of base runners on the base pass, but their, their average today with runners on has not been up to par of what we've seen so far this year. As this one fouled out of play, UNLV has gotten four hits in 21 plate appearances with runners on today. For San Jose State, they were 5 for 15 against Noah Matera with runners on, 0 for 3 against Hayden Nierman. So they are 5 for 18 in that uh, department. Teams have combined here for 13 runs off of 14 hits and uh, three errors. As this one into the gap, this ball is well hit and it's going to land for a base hit. The tie run will score here for the Spartans. And rounding from first all the way home, San Jose State will take the lead. It will be 8-7 to seven as Colette will score and so will Duro. And the Spartans retake the lead 8-7 to seven off of a two-run double there from Olasso into the right center field gap. So the Spartans finally get that uh, big hit here after being held scoreless since the third inning. And we're going to have, looks like a pitch hitter here for San Jose State. It'll be Reese Hernandez. will pitch hit here for Theo Hardy. So Woods out of the pen. Actually, they did not give a double on that play uh, on the update. It is an error. 
An error there for Diego Alarcon. So on that um, that liner by Colette. So an error there for the Rebels. So for Woods, technically has given up now one earned run, but now is in line for the loss here. So runners at uh, second for the Spartans. After they take an 8-7 lead, first pitch. This is on the outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count. So yet again for UNLV, an opportunity to hold on to a lead and, and pick up a win. They have now blown a lead in six straight conference games. As this one's going to go up the middle for a base hit. Olasso is going to be waved home, picked up there by Charles. The throw to the plate, high. Picked out there by Bajani, actually gets away from him. Going over to second here will be Hernandez, and that will be a single, an RBI single here for the Spartans, and they take a 9-7 lead here in the top of the seventh inning. So Hernandez, the pitch hitter for Theo Hardy, sends one up the middle and takes the place there of Olasso at second. And back to the top of the lineup here is Robert Hamchuk will be up to bat. Three runs here in the top of the seventh inning for the Spartans as they lead it 9-7. to seven. Time is going to be called here as Bajani will come out and talk to Connor Woods, who now has back-to-back -back rough outings for Woods. We've got uh, some action in the bullpen here for UNLV. So after Noah Matera was hit hard in the first three innings, got a scoreless fourth. Hayden Nierman was flawless in the uh, in his two innings of relief work. UNLV goes to Connor Woods, and he has been hit a little rough here. Has given up now three hits, three runs. Two of them have been earned as the Spartans take a 9-7 lead here in the top of the seventh inning in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Spartans are trying to get one game out of this uh, three-game series against UNLV. Dropped the first game 13-12 and the second game 13-7. And now Stan Stolte coming out to the uh, talk with the home plate umpire, Timothy Re uh, Resch. And we'll see if that will be the end of the line here for Connor Woods as UNLV is getting uh, somebody warmed up in the bullpen. I believe we're going to have a pitching change here for UNLV as Connor Woods. That's, looks like Stan Stolte's kind of, he went, you can see here, he went to the home plate umpire, then takes the long kind of walk out to the mound. I think that here, just giving the relief pitcher as much time as he can to warm up. Can't quite see the number for UNLV. You've got a uh, runner on second here for San Jose State, Reese Hernandez, with a pitch hit RBI single. Highlighted by a two-run double for the uh, Spartans. Well, Lasso with a big-time hit. Now, uh, well, now the home plate umpire is going to come over and said, "All right, you going to make the change?" Or, yep. All right, here we go. Change is going to be made here for UNLV. Connor Woods will be out of the ball game. The Rebels going to the pen yet again. Here, as the Spartans have taken a 9-7 lead here in the top of the seventh inning. We'll be right back here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.
Pitching change here for the Rebels. They came into the seventh inning, leading it seven to six, but the Spartans have gotten three runs here of uh, Chase Connor Woods out of his relief work here. And coming on for the Rebels will be the junior right-handed pitcher, Troy Balco, who will go up against the number one hitter for San Jose State. Back to the top of the lineup is Robert Hamchuk up to bat here. Hernandez is over at second after getting the RBI single, highlighted by a big two-run double by Olasso. For Olasso, that double, that was his third double of the year, RBI number 12 and 13. And Hernandez with the RBI single. Spartans trying to get some more runs here. they got to get as many runs as they can because they know this UNLV offense can score quick and in a hurry. Uh, they can score a lot of runs as well. I mean, one of the best hitting teams. Let me, let me rephrase that. They can score a lot of runs, and they can score a lot of runs quickly. There we go, proper English. As now you can see big, ooh, big gust of wind. It has been a very windy day. It is a, a tradition like no other in Las Vegas during the uh, softball and baseball season. Runner going to third here, but Johnny does not fire as Hernandez is able to get the stolen base. So he breaks from second to third. Hernandez coming off the bench, pitch hitting here, gets an RBI hit, and then is able to advance to third on the stolen base. So now one out here as Hamchuk up to bat. And now is an opportunity. Let's see if he can get a ground out here to score the 10th run for San Jose State. Alco right now, the count two and one, the pitch. High and inside, three and one. Falco wearing number 12, junior from Peoria, Arizona. Trying to keep this a two run deficit. You know, he was down by five in this ball game before getting um, seven runs, uh, outscoring the Spartans seven to one to take a seven six lead. But San Jose State with a big inning here in the top of the seventh. Nine to seven is the score. Is that one fouled out? of play, and the count goes full three and two for Balco. His last appearance came earlier this week against Dixie State, an inning of work. He did not give up a hit or a run. Gave up a walk, but had a scoreless outing out of the pen. 3-2 pitch. That one's going to be lined into center field for a base hit, and the Spartans will take a 10-7 lead here in the top of the seventh inning as Hernandez comes home to score. Hamchuk with his third hit of the ball game and his second RBI. RBI number 20 on the year for the sophomore left fielder as the Spartans have really uh, come alive here in the seventh right inning. Fielder, James Shimashita will be up to bat here. The junior is 0 for 3, has scored a run and has a walk along with a strikeout. So Balco can't get the strikeout there. Spartans hitting the uh, pen there for UNLV as the first pitch will be taken on the outside for a ball. 1-0 is the count. The uh, stat line here for Balco on the year. Falco is 0-2 with two saves, 27 and two-thirds innings pitch. He's given up 22 runs. 19 of them have been earned, a 6.18 ERA. So that one's fouled back into the net. 42 hits overall, 11 walks to 19 strikeouts. He's given up 10 doubles and three home runs. For Connor Woods, you can put an end to his uh, out, outing out of the pen. A third of an inning, 19 pitches, gave up two hits, four runs, three earned, a walk, no strikeouts. Is uh was helped out with an error there at third by Alarcon. That one in there for a strike, and the count will go two, one, and two. One out here with Hamchuk over at first. Shimashita up to bat here. Falco set, looking for the strike out the pitch. Got it on the outside corner, strike three. And Troy is able to bounce back there after giving up the base hit. Gets the strikeout, and that will bring up the number three old hitter, the second baseman, Charles McAdoo, who is 0 for 4 on the day with a run score. Has also Charles struck out. McAdoo. So for UNLV, coming up in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning, they will have the 7, 8, 9 hitters, Andrade, Bajani, and Panero. It's the San Jose State team that uh, had this three-run lead. They've already seen one uh Decent size lead uh, evaporate so far here today. They were up five to nothing going into the bottom of the second inning. For UNLV, got a three in the bottom of the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. And when uh, the fourth inning, the two run single by Hank Zeisler, as this one is going to be fouled back out of play. Count right now one and one here. Rebels, as you can kind of hear the uh, wind, you can kind of see the cameras move a little bit. It's really, really starting to pick up. But I mean, we've only seen two long balls. I would have 
expect to see more with how, I mean, just how well these, these two teams have been hitting uh, coming into this weekend series. San Jose State hit 43 home runs. That was third most in the Mountain West for UNLV. They were at 49. That was best in the Mountain West. But uh, so far today, and obviously, yeah, like I said, it's a tradition, tradition like no other. This one goes on the inside, and that one's going to hit McAdoo. So we've had quite a bit of hit batters so far today, multiple for both teams. And that will advance Hamchuk over to second, McAdoo over to first, and that will bring up the red-hot hitter so far here today and over the last few games, Dalton Bowling. Bowling is three for four with a run scored. That came off of his three-run home run back in the top of the first inning. Also has two singles. Like I said, I don't know what it is. During the softball and baseball seasons, Saturdays are just the, the days that are always miserably windy here in Las Vegas. As the first pitch is ripped down the left field line, foul. And also give credit here to San Jose State, the, uh, coming out of the pen, Jansen. Two-thirds of an inning, and uh, got two strikeouts, two big strikeouts against two very good hitters for UNLV, Walls and Adarian Williams. Uh, and he's in line now for the win. Ten to seven is the score here. Rebels trying to keep this a three-run deficit. This one in the dirt here. Good stop by Bajani. And one and one is the count. See, in every which way that San Jose State's been able to kind of generate the offense, kind of like what UNLV's done so far today. We've had an error, a hit, couple hit batters. We've had wild pitches, and then just be able to get the big timely hitting, a double, single. Spartans a nice inning here. Four runs here in the seventh. Most runs that they've scored in an inning. Is there a swing and a miss there? Bowling looking for another three-run home run. They came up empty. As the count goes to one and two. Spear is due up next here. And it's already set nine batters up for the Spartans in this inning. Amchuk at second. McAdoo over at first. Falco is set looking for the strikeout here. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss strike three. And that will end the inning. But the Spartans get a big time offensive production here in the top of the seventh inning. They get four runs, and they take a 10-7 lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be right back with San Jose State leading at 10-7 here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Jordan Andrade will lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning as UNLV will have to play catch up yet again, down by three, as the first pitch will be taken for a strike. 0 and 1 is the count. Andrade, Bijani, and Panero do up here for the Rebels after San Jose State scored four in the top of the seventh. Take a 10 7 lead. Rebels were down by uh, five earlier in this ballgame before 
getting a one-run lead as this one is in there for a strike yet again. 0-2 is the count here as Darren Jansen back out for another inning of work. Very effective in the two batters that he faced with two on. Coming out of the pen, struck out Walls and Adarian Williams. Looking for his third straight strikeout. This one bounced in the dirt. And the count will go to 1 and 2. For Andrade, he is 0 for 1 with an RBI ground out and has also been able to draw two walks. You know, if he's seven walks drawn so far here today, two by Krizik, two by Andrade, one by Adarian Williams, one by Zeisler, and one by Ryland Charles. There's, there's a swing and a miss there. Ball gets away there from Spear. Throw over to first will be in time. Two to three on the score sheet after the strikeout for out number one. So three straight strikeouts there for Jansen out of the pen. UNLV has now struck out nine times so far here today. Bajani up to bat here. He's one for three at an RBI hit uh, in one of his plate appearances. Trying to get UNLV a rally going here. Looks like Darren Jansen, if he has got the uh, energy, this one will go back out of play. I think for uh, Brad San Sanfilippo and his uh, San Jose State uh, staff, uh, he, he's been the only one really kind of shutting down this UNLV uh, lineup. Hey, just ride him as as long as he can go. You're just trying to get a win here and, and stay above uh, 500. As yeah, this one will be on the outside for a ball. 2-0 and is the count here to Bajani. Eric, who's had a nice series so far uh, against uh, the Spartans, has gotten six hits so far. He is six for 12. He will send a chopper foul down the third baseline. Two and one is the count here. One out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ten runs off of 12 hits, one air for the Spartans. Seven runs off of five hits, two airs here for UNLV. Connor Woods currently in line for the loss for the Rebels after he went a third of an inning. 19 pitches thrown. He gave up two hits, four earned, or four runs. Three of them were earned, a walk and no strikeouts. As Bajani swings and misses at that one. And the count goes even. Two and two here to the catcher for UNLV. I'll go out of the pen. Two-thirds of an inning. Did give up a hit that led to the 10th run, but was able to get back-to-back uh, -back strikeouts as we get a nice uh, shade here. Looks like the lone cloud of the day is uh, hit over the sun as this one will go foul out of play. Santino Panero due up next here for the Rebels. UNLV, who was on a four-game winning streak, won the last game against UNR. Picked up a mid uh, midweek game win over Dixie State as Bajani will foul this one back out of play yet again. And then before picking up two wins here against San Jose State Thursday night and Friday night, the series bumped up one day, obviously tomorrow, Easter Sunday. Count is two and two here. Jansen looking for his fourth straight strikeout out of the pen, the pitch. And Bajani's going to rip that one in the left field for a base hit. So the catcher Bajani for UNLV just picked up his second of the ball game. He's two for four, and that is the sixth hit for the Rebels. Two by Bajani, two by Alarcon, one by Zeisler, and one by Walls. And Santino Panaro will be up to bat. Panaro is 0 for 3, run scored, and an RBI. They'll get an opportunity here as UNLV will try to chip away at this uh, three-run deficit. Jansen was one strike away from getting four straight strikeouts. Now we'll deal with his first base runner that he has given up. Did a great job in the uh, bottom of the sixth inning with two on and one out, striking out two very talented hitters for UNLV. Panero up to bat here, and then Ryland Charles do up next if Panero can avoid a double play here. But Johnny's over at first. Jansen is set the pitch. Dropped in there for a strike. One and one is a count. The Rebels will have one day off before facing off against Loyola Marymount in a two-game series, Monday and Tuesday, and then Friday through Sunday series between them and the Lobos of New Mexico. That will end UNLV's 13-game homestand before going on the road for four games, one against ASU and then three uh, against Air Force. Char uh, Panero trying to go opposite field and fouls this one out of play. One and two is the count here to the freshman, the lone freshman in this lineup for UNLV. As you look at Charles and Krizik, sophomores, uh, Walls and Williams, uh, and, and Andrade is also a sophomore. Walls and Williams are juniors. Seniors, Bajani, Alarcon, and Zeiser, although with the extra COVID year, I don't know exactly who's what. 
class-wise, as this one will be fouled back out of play. What I do know is Santino Panero is a is a freshman. The count is one and two, one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning, ten to seven. UNLV scored three in three straight innings, three in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, but haven't scored since. Trying to answer back that four-run spot by the Spartans in this top of the top of this inning. As that one is down low for a ball, two and two's account. Righty versus lefty matchup here. Jansen very effective out of the pen. Looking for another strikeout here. The 2-2. Two -two. He is going to be slapped. Great catch there at third. Throw, no throw over to third, but what a play there at third there by Dalton Bowling. Takes away a potential double there. Diving stop going to his right. Two outs now here in the bottom of the seventh inning. A Sports Center top ten worthy plays. You see here on the instant replay. What a jump there and a great play down the third baseline. That could have been big trouble. At least runners at second and third here for the Rebels. That might be a game changer. Bowling who has been phenomenal at the plate here today. Shows off the defense there. And Ryland Charles will have to get something going with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. First pitch in there for a strike. 0 1 is a count. Charles is 0 for 2 with an RBI and a walk. Jansen, who gives a very big hug to Bowling when they get to the dugout here after that uh, play. That, that could have been, you know, you look at the game changer there. If not a run scored, it's runners at second and third with one out, and you go flip it over to the top of the lineup for UNLV. And now Bajani's still at first with two outs, and Charles up to bat here. With the count right now, one and one. Austin Krizik do up next here if Charles can keep this inning alive. The pitch. Charles will lay down a bunt. It's beautifully placed here. Spear will pick it up. Throw to first will be not in time. Oh, close, close there at first, but Charles is able to get a infield bunt single as San Jose State not locking that call. Brad Sanfilippo, uh, San the head coach there, out of the dugout as he puts his hands up here wondering. There, as you see here on the instant replay, it's a very, very close play. Uh, that's that's a bang-bang play there, and it can go either way, and now uh, we'll have a more extended conversation here as Brooks O'Hearn will come over and talk to. Uh, the head coach for San Jose State. And now that's going to be two on with two out here for Austin Krizik. For Charles, that's his first hit of the ball game. 58 hit overall. And I uh, believe here for Charles, wrote it down here, now it gives him now a seven-game hitting streak. Austin Krizik is up to bat. Krizik, who's currently on a 10-game hitting streak, but he is 0 for 2 today with two walks. He'd like an opportunity here to drive in a couple of runs. Tied run to the plate here for the Rebels in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jansen is set here. Righty versus righty matchup. The first pitch dropped in there for a strike. 0 1 is a count. For Austin so far this year against right handed hitters, he's hitting 339 with two outs, 325. And with runners on base, 347. All very impressive numbers for the sophomore Krizik. Got to start out today. Start today out in left field. The pitch. Krizik will send a chopper over to third, and Bowling will clamp it down and step on the bag there for the force out, and that will end the inning as Bowling makes a very big play there over at third, denying a potential extra base hit, and the Spartans are able to put up another zero spot as we go to the top of the eighth. San Jose State leading this one 10-7 to here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.
Top of the eighth here at Early Wilson Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for joining us here on your Saturday afternoon, wherever you're watching, as the first pitch is in there for a ball. 1-0 and is the count here. Thank you for joining us here on the Mount West Network on Stadium via the YouTube broadcast provided to us by Learfield and by UNLV Athletics. Yeah, Troy Balco back out for another inning of relief work here to Matt Spear, and he's currently behind in the count 2-0. Well, some nifty defensive play there at third by Dalton Bowling, who took away potential extra base hit and was able to get the third out there, getting the force out at third. Helped save at least a run for the Spartans. Yeah, as there's a swing and a miss there. Two and one is the count. Rebels that were trying to maneuver, uh, generate something there. Ryland Charles was able to beat out a very close play on a uh, surprise uh, bunt as this one's fouled back out of play. Two and two is the count. But to UNLV's Austin Krizik, who's now 0 for 3 on the day, grounded out to third. UNLV will have the heart of their lineup, though, due up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Aller Kahn's Eisler and Walls do up. Balco trying to get a zero spot here. Keep this deficit as slim as possible for UNLV. Down by three. Is this one fouled off yet again? Two and two is the count. Balco, the fourth pitcher that UNLV has used so far today. No, Matera went uh, four innings of work. Okay, Nearman, two innings. The relief work was phenomenal. As that one is in there, strike three. As that one curved back into the middle part of the zone there for the strikeout there for Balco, who picks up his third strikeout out of relief work here in the, in the top of the eighth inning. One out here, and the center fielder, Jack Collette, will be up to bat. Collette on the day is 0 for 4 with a run scored. He's also struck out twice. Spartans who sent nine batters up there in the uh, seventh inning as the first pitch taken high for a ball. 1-0 is the count. And for UNLV, really just yeah, Connor Woods did not uh, have it today. Other than that, the, the uh, relief has been, been decent for the Rebels as there's a swing and a miss there for a strike. 1-1 one one is the count. The Rebels will try to uh, wake the bats up here as they have not scored since the fourth inning. It's been about three innings so far. Uh, that was about the uh, stretch there that San Jose State had before they started scoring yet again. They scored in the first three innings before scoring in the seventh. UNLV scored in the second, third, and fourth. UNLV was down by five going into the bottom of the second inning. It was five to nothing for going up seven to six. This one, taking down low for a ball. Three and one is the count here. Hunter Duro is due up next. Falco in danger of walking. Yeah, there's a swing and a miss there. Walking Colette, but he's gotten the count now full here. Three and two, one out. Balco has been great out of the pen, just like Jansen has been for San Jose State. Spartans have also... Or actually, the Spartans have used uh, three hitters, uh, three hitters, three pitchers. Jansen has gone a, an inning and two thirds. As that one misses outside ball four, so that will be the first walk issued there by Balco out of the pen. Fourth walk overall that UNLV has given up here. One out walk, and that will bring up the first baseman here, first Hunter Duro. Duro, who has had a very good game as well. One for two with an RBI and has walked twice. That uh, one hit was a solo home run. It was his team leading 11th of the year and his 28th RBI. First pitch in there for a strike. 0-1 is the count here. Well, Lasso do up next. He has uh, the big game winning hit so far. He got a two run double. That gave the Spartans the lead there in the seventh inning. Next pitch. Check swing. Did he go around? Nope. And it's going to be taken for a ball. One on one is a count. Is kind of here now. He, gusts are really, really starting to pick it up. Nah, check on the weather app here. I'm looking to see what type of wind we're seeing here. It's about 18 miles an hour going, uh, going to the northeast now. As this one is fouled back out of play. And the count now, one and two. One out here in the top of the eighth inning, Set, uh, 10 to seven. San Jose State leading UNLV. The Rebels looking for their 25th win of the year. They lead the conference right now at 14 and three. 
They dropped their first uh, game in conference play. Their, their first loss in conference play came to the Spartans uh, back up in San Jose, California. You know, we took two out of three there. Runner going. That one goes back foul out of play yet again. So the count's still one and two. Collette over at first after drawing the walk. Spartans are looking for their 19th win of the year and improved to 10 and 8 in conference play. Last year they went 6 and 32 and 19 in conference play. Throw back over to first and coming back, getting back safe is uh, Colette. As I mentioned, for the Rebels, uh, right here in the middle of this 13-game uh, homestand. As the next pitch here is going to be taken down low for a ball. Two and two is the count. UNLV, their remaining series in conference play, will be up against New Mexico at home, on the road against Air Force, of a three-game series on the road against Fresno State, and then a home series against San Diego State. As the 2-2 two -two pitch. Runner going, swing and a miss here. Bajani throw over. It's going to be high. Late tag there. I believe the high throw is going to cost UNLV a base there. Stolen base for San Jose State. But the Rebels do get a strikeout there as Balco picks up another K out of the pen. And that will bring up the designated hitter for the Spartans, McKenna Olasso. Designated hitter, McKenna Olasso. So Colette with the stolen base, that will be his sixth stolen base of the year. So Balco set here looking for a scoreless uh, eighth. He's off to a good start here uh, against the lasso as the first pitch is dropped in for a strike. 0 one is a count. Two outs here, two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Ten to seven. San Jose State leading UNLV. Rebels trying to Play the comeback kids here. So they got the heart of the lineup due up in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the pitch swung on a miss there. Count is 0-2. Sparns who scored three runs in the first inning. All off the uh, bat there of Dalton Bowling, a three-run home run. Scored two in the second, a uh, couple singles, RBI hits, and then a solo shot by Duro in the third inning before they held scoreless until the seventh inning. As the 0-2 pitch, down low, 1-2. and two. So Balco trying to get the strike out here. He's been very effective out of the pad. Already has four Ks. Looking for strikeout number five, the pitch. Down low, trying to get the lasso to chase. He cannot. And the count goes even, 2-2 two and two here. Due up next here will be the replacement shortstop here, Ruben Mercado, who uh, is replacing Theo Hardy, who was pitch hit for by Reese Hernandez back in the uh, seventh inning. Hernandez with an RBI hit. Falco set the 2-2 pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. Another strikeout foul tip actually caught there by Bajani. Falco, another impressive inning there, and the Rebels We'll go into the bottom of the eighth inning with their three, four, and five hitters due up as they trail at 10 to 7 here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.
Diego Alarcon will lead it off here in the bottom of the eighth. Rebels trying to climb back here down to the Spartans 10 to seven. UNLV was down five nothing earlier in this ball game before taking a seven six lead. And San Jose State scored uh, four in the top of the seventh inning as Darren Jansen back out for another inning of work as he almost spiked the ball there. The first pitch taken down low for a ball one and zero to count. Alarcon, good day for him. He's two for four with a strikeout. Has also scored a run. We'll take that one down low. Two and O's to count. So you know he's got, you know, wh where they want in the lineup here to start a rally. It is Alarcon, Zeisler, and Walls. I mean, like I said, one through nine. It's just it's a tough go uh, go of it against this uh, UNLV team. They're all super super talented. All but one hitter hasn't uh, isn't uh, above 300 average, and that hitter is Eric Bajani, who today is two for four. So. He's been seeing the ball well against the Spartans' pit pitching staff as that one is in there for a strike. Three and one is the count here as Aller Khan is trying to find a way to get on the base pass, maybe create some problems here for Jansen. Some action in the bullpen here for San Jose State. Jansen, who has done a really good job uh, out of the pen, quieting UNLV. As Aller Khan checks swing, did he go? They said yes. Aller Khan flipped the bat, was heading over to first, but the first base umpire, Brooks O'Hearn, Says that Alar Khan went around, and the count goes full now, three and two. He's here on the instant replay. Got a good view of it. Yep, Diego went around. At, uh, that one broke the plane there. Good call by the first base umpire, Brooks O'Hearn. Jansen is set. The payoff pitch swung on him, missed strike three. So Alar Khan, who thought he was going to get his uh, first walk of the ball game, Jansen is able to battle back for another strikeout. Boy, Darren has been... Really, really good out of the pen here as he's gone now two innings uh, full here. He's given up two hits, no runs, no walks, and now four strikeouts. Tank Zeisler will be up to bat here. Zeisler, who is one for one with a two-run single that gave UNLV the lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. He's also walked and has been hit by a pitch twice. First pitch here to Zeisler right down the middle for a strike. 0-1 oh is a count. So Zeisler up the bat here. Joey Walls do up next. Darian Williams is in the hole if Walls or Zeisler can get on the base paths. Next pitch in there for a strike. 0 oh, 2 is the Cowboy. Jansen is really, you know, he's throwing it with confidence there on the mound. And really attacking now. Uh, Zeisler, a very dangerous hitter for UNLV after he went down 3 0 to Alarcon. Really had to battle back. We'll get a check swing. Answer right now as Zeisler gets underneath this one. It's a mile-high pop-up here on the right-hand side of the field, but it's a very windy day. It's going to be a trick here for the second baseman who's tra uh, traveled all the way out there in a shallow right field. McAdoo clamps it down for out number two. And that will bring up Joey Walls. Walls is one for four. He has a double, but he has struck out in three of his four plate appearances. Has the hat trick trying to avoid the golden sombrero. Left two runners on the base pass. UNLV overall today have left 10 runners on. 10-7 to seven the score here. Spartans on top. As the first pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1 is a count. So give credit to Jansen who is attacking and is getting a lot of success here against the heart of the lineup for UNLV. A strikeout and a pop-up in the shallow right field. Walls will take that one on the outside for a ball. 1-1 one is a count. Rebels. You mentioned lo looking for their 25th win of the year. And tried to prove to 15 and 3 in conference play. As Walls will take this one down low. 2 and 1 is the count. Rebels currently with a three game lead over the Wolfpack, but unfortunately for the Rebels, I'm going to double check here on the schedule. I believe that was the only time that UNLV will face uh, UNR this season, as this one is going to be down low for a ball. 3 and 1 is the count. So. The Wolfpack, they not only win uh, two out of three against UNLV, they also get the tiebreaker as well. As a 3-1. Down low ball four. So Walls is able to draw a two-out walk here, and that will bring up Adarian Williams. Williams is 0 for 3 with a walk and two strikeouts. Try to get something going here with two outs against Darren Jansen. Also, one change I forgot to mention uh, defensively there for San Jose State. Over at first now is number 36, Danny Zimmerman. We'll play Hunter Duro, the uh, starting first baseman today, who finishes off the day one for three with a solo home run and also had two walks as well. 
Jansen is set here against Williams. First pitch in there for a strike. 0 1 is a count. Rebels also have a few more non-conference games as well. Uh, we talked about the two-game series against Loyola Marymount, the one game against Arizona State, have a game against Cal Baptist, Dixie State. Three-game series against Hawaii, which will actually be, um, as Williams is going to line that one into left field for a base hit. So Darian Williams is able to pick up his first hit of the day. He is now one for four, so a two-out walk and a two-out single. UNLV's got the tie and run coming up to play here, and it looks like we're going to have a... Andrade. Nope, we're going to have a pitch hitter here for UNLV. Check that. It looks like it's going to be Gavin Mez. So Gavin Mez will have an opportunity to hit here for the Rebels. Mez, who has gone 2 for 13 this season, the freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada, went to Bishop Gorman High School. And now he'll have an opportunity here as UNLV is kind of... Uh, playing the, the the situational here a righty versus lefty and now Brad Sanfilippo will come back out for the Spartans and I believe we might have a pitching change here for San Jose State I mentioned they're, they're going to try to you know Jansen the way he was pitching you know let him go as far as he can and Jansen 50 uh, 50 pitches here two and a third will head off here really did a great job of shutting down UNLV so pitching change here for the Spartans Rebels though have the tying run coming to the plate two outs here in the bottom of the eighth Spartans lead at 10 to 7. We'll be right back here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Pitching change here for the Spartans. UNLV will have Gavin Mez up to bat here as Brady Hill is on the mound for the Spartans. Tie and run to the plate here for the Rebels. You've got Walls at second, Adarian Williams at first, a walk and a single. As Jansen on the hook here for the two runners on as the first pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1-1 is the count. For Hill, wearing number 10, his uh, stat line so far this year, 1-0 is his record. He has seven saves, 14 in a third innings pitch. He's given up seven runs. Six of them have been earned. 3.77 ERA, 10 walks to 16 strikeouts. He's only given up one extra base hit this year. It was a home run. Check swing there. Mez did not go around. The count goes to 1-1. One and one. Gavin up to bat right now. As Eric Bajani is due up next, Gavin uh, really a uh, – True catcher, so we will have a new shortstop after Andrade has pitch hit for here. For Mez, he's 2 for 13 on the year. Average sitting at 154, a double, and an RBI along to go along with one walk and four strikeouts. And probably his biggest at bat 
of his young UNLV career. Try to keep this uh, this rally going for UNLV. At least get some runs if UNLV has to go to the ninth inning still down as this one's fouled back out of play. And the count will go to one and two. For Hill, a redshirt sophomore from Spokane, Washington. Played at Washington State last year. As he gets his sign here, looking for the strikeout, the one-two pitch to Gavin Mez. He is up the middle for a base hit, a two-out hit here for Mez. They're going to wave Walls home. Going to third will be Williams, and UNLV another two-out hit here. And the Rebels are now down 10-8 to eight here in the bottom of the eighth inning as Gavin Mez is able to get an RBI hit, his third hit of the year, coming off the bench. And quickly there, UNLV will send in a pitch runner. It will be the speedster, James Gamble. Great at bat there by Mez, down one and two in the count, and lined one up the middle for a base hit as Eric Bajani will have an opportunity here for the Rebels. Bajani's had a good day. He's two for four with an RBI. I was just about to say there for Hill, his last appearance, he actually had two appearances over the weekend against San Diego State. He went to combine two and two thirds innings. He gave up no hits, no runs, a walk and a strikeout. He picked up a win. Uh, did not pick up a save. His last save came against uh, San Diego State back on uh, March 19th, I believe. Or we might have a different uh, – yeah, no, it's San Diego State. just want to double check. They had it spelled out San Diego State on the bottom one, but at the top it said SDSU. I just want to make sure it wasn't South Dakota State or something like that. 10-8 to eight is the score here as Bajani up to bat. Runners on the corners here. The go-ahead run up to bat for the Rebels. First pitch to Bajani, taken down low for a ball. 1-0 and is the count. UNLV, who is down five to nothing, going into the bottom of the second inning, and then outscored the Spartans seven to one to take a seven-six lead. But the Spartans scoring four in the top of the seventh. UNLV getting a run back here. Darian Williams is over at third. Gamble at first. A walk and two singles here with two outs. Bajani gets underneath this one. It's a mile-high pop-up. The wind's going to play some tricks here. It's going to land. Oh, no. Opportunity there for Spear. You saw him getting twisted around there. I mentioned the wind has been creating havoc so far today. That's a tough play up the shoot there for the catcher, and it lands for a foul ball. You see here on the instant replay here on the Matt West Network on Stadium, Spear, he went to going to his left and switched back, had to turn back around, and it lands almost, the, you know, don't know if maybe the pitcher could have had a better chance at that play. It was just a tough play there for the catcher. So that's a big, that's a big sigh of relief. I don't think UNLV will be uh, more happy to get a foul ball there uh, in this game as the 1-1 pitch here to Bajani. Down low and it gets away. Runners are going to, well, Williams thought about advancing. Gamble does advance. And a smart play there by Williams not to advance. Don't chance it there as it bounced in front of Spear. It went halfway in between the mound and home plate. But that does put Gamble uh, in the scoring position here. And anything in the outfield, Gamble has excellent speed. Could tie this ball game up here. 10 to 8 is the score. Right now the count is 2 and 1. Hill is set. The 2 1. Outside ball three. And I there by Bajani as Hill just revved up there and just fired a, a supercharged fastball but could not hit the zone there. Could not get Bajani to chase. So now Bajani in a hitter's count here. The count is three and one. Two outs here. Rebels doing all this with two outs. They've gotten a walk and two singles. The 3 1. Bajani gets underneath this one and will go foul out of play. Count now full three and two. The wind's really starting to blow out here, going from right to left. So if Bajani can get anything up in the air, uh, look out. And we've already seen the tricks that the, the wind has played here today. Williams is at second. James Gamble pitch running at uh, – Williams is at third. James Gamble pitch running is at second. Hill is set. The 3-2 pitch. Misses outside, ball four, close there. The San Jose State fans do not like it, but Johnny is able to draw the walk, his first walk of the ball game, third time that he has reached on base. And UNLV, the bases are juiced here for Santino Panero. Panero, who hit a rope line drive 
to the third baseman. A great play by Dalton Bowling back in the uh, bottom of the, uh, the seventh inning. It had potentially saved at least one run. He'll try to make up for it here. Bases juice two out the first pitch. Misses outside, ball one. Island Charles is due up next if Panero can keep this inning alive. Hill, the closer for San Jose State, coming out of the pen here. And has given up a single and a walk. Lefty versus righty matchup here. Rebels down by two. Trying to come back from the second time today as Panero will get underneath this one and foul it back out of play. Count one and one. Williams at third, Gamble at second, Bajani is at first. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. What this is doing, at least for the Rebels, is it's setting back over to the top of the lineup. If they can't score here, at least they will have one, two, and three hitters due up in the ninth. The Rebels would like to tie it here. The count one and one. Hill is set. They actually taking a long, long time now. He set the pitch. And Panero gets underneath this one out of play as the wind will push this one into the stands. Count one and two, two outs here. We saw Hill in a one-two count against Gavin Mez, and Mez was able to get an RBI single to keep this inning alive. He was pitch run for by James Gamble, who's over at second. Hill looking for the strikeout. The one-two. Panero will line this one in the left field. This has a chance to land, and it will for a base hit. Williams will score. Gamble will score. And we are tied 10 all here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The freshman designated hitter for UNLV, Santino Panero, is able to get a bloop single in the left field to score two to tie the ball game up. His third RBI of the day. Overall, RBI number 12 and 13 on the 2022 campaign. And here comes Ryland Charles. And now for UNLV, they may have a chance to take the lead going into the ninth inning. What a sequence here for the Rebels, all starting with two outs. A walk, a single by Darian Williams, a single by Gavin Mez. Bajani then walked, and then a two-run single by Panero as Charles swinging for the fences misses that one. 0-1 is the count. Bajani stayed at second there, so we'll see what uh, if Charles can get anything in the gap there. Bajani is a catcher, but we'll see with how much he has on the uh, how much speed he has on the base paths here. He is the go-ahead run. Austin Krizik is due up next if Charles can keep this inning alive. Hill has blown a save here, now in danger of blowing the lead. This one down low. In the dirt, good stop there. The count goes to one and one. And as, like I said, it's all started. Joey Walls with a walk, a Darian with a single, Mez with a single, and then a walk, and then a two-run single, the Rebels. Never say die here, this offense. They can score very quickly. Hill will put that one low and in the dirt. Count goes to two and one. The best offensive team in the Mount West. Another double-digit performance against the Spartans. It's five of the six games that UNLV has played against San Jose State this season that they have scored in double digits. The only time that they did not when they uh, dropped the game uh, earlier this, uh, this season to San Jose State. As Hill is set here, the pitch. Charles is going to send a chopper over to first. The first baseman Zimmerman has it. He'll clamp on the or step on the bag for out number three. But UNLV three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, including two off the bat of Centino Panero that ties the ball game up. We go to the top of the ninth. Ten all here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.
Back here live at Early Wilson Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is a brand new ball game here in the top of the ninth. Troy Balco back out for another inning of work. And he now <laughs> a little more high pressure for him as the game is tied. UNLV scoring three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. As the first pitch will be taken high for a ball. 1-0 is the count. Ruben Mercado will be up to bat here. He'll get his first opportunity. He came in as a defensive replacement. He'll send a line drive to left field on a line right to Austin Krizik for out number one. Balco has done a fabulous job out of the pen here today as we look at his line score right now. Uh, as he's gone at two innings even, 43 pitches, one hit, no runs, no earned, one walk, five strikeouts. As coming up to bat here will be Robert Hamchuk. Robert. First pitch here by... Balco is sent high up into the inner center field. This ball is well hit, going back at the warning track, and it will be caught there by Ryland Charles. Boy, Hamchuk did a great job of getting that one into the jet stream. This win has just been just pushing heavily out into about straightaway center to left center, and but just did not have enough uh, on that one. Two outs here, a line out to left, and a fly out to center as James Shimashita will be up to bat here. Shimashita is 0 for 4 with a run score to walk and two strikeouts here. Balco looking for a 1-2-3 inning as the Rebels. As this one's going to be pushed, one attempt pushed foul down the third baseline. 0-1-1 is the count. So for UNLV, they will have the two, three, and four hitters due up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Best, I mean, UNLV, they played it perfectly. They got the heart of the lineup that they want up here to get a walk-off win. Krizik, Alarcon, and Zeisler. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike, 0-2 is the count. Two outs here, Balco looking for another strikeout here. He's got five so far out of the pen. Bullpen for UNLV minus that uh, seventh inning has been phenomenal today. As this one high up into the air in the right field. This ball is well hit, going back at the wall, and it is gone. A two-run home run for James Shimashita who is able to get his third home run of the year as he got that one up into the jet stream. It goes over the right field wall, and the Spartans retake the lead. It is 11-10 here on the top of the ninth. The third home run for the Spartans so far here today, and Balco's first mistake out of his relief appearance it is a costly one there for UNLV as Charles McAdoo will be up to bat. This one will be popped up high up in the air. This is going to be an adventure here out in shallow center field. Charles coming in. He'll clamp it down for out number three. But Shimashita with a big solo home run over the right field wall. The Spartans are able to answer back. They take a one-run lead going into the bottom of the ninth inning. It's San Jose State 11, UNLV 10. We'll be right back here on the Mount West Network on Stadium. Bottom of the ninth here in Las Vegas, Nevada. UNLV trailing this one 11 to 10. It has been a fun matchup here. This final game of the three game series between UNLV and San Jose State. The Rebels down to their final three outs as the first pitch here to Austin Krizik will be taken for a ball. 1 0 is the count. So the Rebels look to be in control 
They got the first two outs in the ninth inning after getting uh, three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, but James Shimashita with a home run with two outs against Troy Balco. And that was the announcer, uh, ultimate announcer's jinx right there. Right before that, I said the bullpen minus that uh, that uh, fourth uh, four inning, four run seventh inning. Uh, Connor Woods uh, struggled in that one. Shimashita hits a solo home run, and there we go. The announcer's jinx is real. As this one is going to be taken for a strike. Two and one is the count here to Krizik. Krizik is 0 for 3 with two walks and a strikeout. Austin currently right now sitting on a 10 game hitting streak. Would love to get number 11 right here and at least getting the tie and run on the base paths. The 2 1. Krizik swings and misses at that one. It's 2 and 2. It's Krizik, Alarcon, and Zeisler. Spartans who have hit three home runs so far here today. UNLV none so far. UNLV came in uh, to this game leading the Mount West in home runs. They've been actually destroying the ball in the first two games. The 2 2. Krizik will send this one on a line. It takes a nasty hop and will go into center field for a base hit. So Austin Krizik is able to get the base hit there as Mercado did a great job getting over there to his left. But that one, great contact there by Krizik. Uh, probably had a high exit velo off the bat. And it took just a nasty hop there for Krizik who picks up his first hit of the ball game. That's the 11th hit for UNLV. Ten runs scored. Two errors overall as Diego Alarcon will be up to bat here. Diego is two for five. And scored a run and struck out twice. His last plate appearance, he thought he was going to get ball four. First base umpire. This one spiked in the dirt, and Krizik will go to second. Got by Spear there behind the plate. And now the tying run is in scoring position here with nobody out for the Rebels. Hill just fired that fastball and did not have good control on that one. No chance there for Spears. It went all the way back to the backstop. And now UNLV, an opportunity here. I think Alarcon, at worst here, just try to get that runner over to third with, and, and give an opportunity for Zeisler and Walls. Short lead there for Krizik at second. And Hill will step off and put Krizik back over to that second base back. I mentioned for Alarcon, he thought he was going to get ball four, but Brooks O'Hearn said that he went around and Diego struck out. So he would try to bounce back after his last plate appearance. Overall today, two for five for Diego, the third baseman. As the next pitch is down low, good stop there by Spear, and the count goes to 2-0. and oh. Austin Krizik at second, a single, and then advancing on a wild pitch. The Rebels, this has been a fun game, back and forth between these teams. Uh, San Jose State, they have blown a three-run lead and a five-run lead. Right now sitting at a one-run lead, this one outside, and it's now a 3-0 and oh count here to Alarcon. So the tie run is at second. The go-ahead run is at the plate here. Hank Zeisler is on deck. You got Zeisler and Walls and Williams. Uh, Lurking here for the Rebels. Rebels got the best part of their lineup here up. Try to make this comeback here. The 3-0 pitch misses outside ball four. Good at bat there by Diego Alarcon. And Hill after giving up that single. And a wild pitch, a walk here. Joey Walls will be up to bat here. Or, sorry, uh, Hank Zeisler will be up to bat here for the Rebels. Joey Walls do up next after Zeisler. So Hank... Who's had some great moments in his 2022 campaign here at UNLV. He's one for two with two RBIs and a walk. And Spear will come out to talk to Brady Hill, who came in a relief work there in the eighth inning, trying to get a four-out save. Uh, final line score there for Jansen. He went two and a third innings, 50 pitches, gave up three hits, two runs, two earn, a walk, and four strikeouts. He was really good at the pen. I think really started to quiet down UNLV. Just ran out of gas there at the end. Right now, Hill, a third of an inning. He's given up three hits, one run, one earn, two walks, no strikeouts. And now we might have another pitching change here for San Jose State as Brad Sanfilippo is back out here to talk it over with Hill, who has seven saves on the year. Zeisler is up to bat. Maybe, I don't know. If we might, uh, I can't quite see who's throwing there for San Jose State. They might want to flip it to make it a lefty versus lefty matchup. So it is going to be a pitching change here for the Spartans. 
Brady Hill out of the ball game. UNLV has got the tying run at second and the go-ahead run at first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Spartans clinging to 11-10 lead. We'll be right back here on the Mountain West Network on Stadium. High drama here in the bottom of the ninth inning. UNLV trailing this one 11 to 10, but they got the tying run at second. The go-ahead run at first. Bless you, by the way. As UNLV trying to sweep San Jose State. Pitching change for San Jose State. It is number 17, Corey Sanchez. Lefty versus lefty matchup here between Sanchez and Hank Zeisler. We'll look at it for Hank uh, on the year against left-handed hitters. He's actually been mashing better than right-handed hitters. 455 average against left-handed hitters, right-handed hitters, he's hitting 404. So it's kind of, I don't know, pick your poison. He's, he's just been he's just been seeing the ball so well uh, so far here uh, this year. So Sanchez wearing number 17 will get the opportunity here. His uh, stat line, 3-2 and two is his record. He's pitched 30 innings, given up 17 runs, 14 of them earned, 4.20 ERA. Overall, 30 hits given up, 12 walks, 18 strikeouts, given up two doubles, two triples, four home runs. Throwing three wild pitches and one hit batter. Got to be careful, though. They did have a wild pitch that got Krizik over to first to second here. So Zeisler up to bat here. He is one for two. His one hit was a two-run single that gave UNLV the lead at one point uh, in the ballgame. That came in the bottom of the fourth inning as the first pitch is taken for a ball. One of those account. Hank showing bunt there. As the count right now, UNLV trying to get a comeback here. 11 to 10 is the score. The pitch. Zeisler pulls back and is going to be taken down low for a ball. 2-0 is the count. High drama here. UNLV was trailed by five runs, by three runs, and now trailing by one. They've been able, they took the lead down by five and then tied it up when they were down by three. James Shimashita was able to get a big home run with two outs at the top of the ninth inning to give the Spartans the lead. Zeisler showing bunt, pulls back yet again, and the count now is 3-0. and oh. So Sanchez out of the pen here, has missed the zone, and an opportunity here for the Rebels. If you're Hank Zeisler, I mean, this could be an opportunity here to load him up with nobody out for Joey Walls. Krizik at second, Alarcon at first, Krizik Able to get a hit here as first of the ball game after it took a wicked hop on the shortstop there, uh, Mercado. The 3-0. Zeisler pulls back ball four. Two walks and a single in this inning. Sanchez out of the pen. Zeisler was trying to give himself up for an out there. They don't get the out of San Jose State, and the bases are juiced here for Joey Walls. Walls is one for four. Has scored two runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Has a double. That was his lone hit. And now for Joey here. Defense will be in for San Jose State. Now, obviously, you know, that walk isn't 
necessarily, you know, a, a killer there. Obviously, now you, you do move the go-ahead run in a scoring position, but you do get the force out at home. Grizzik at third, Alarcon at second, Zeisler over at first, Joey Walls up to bat here. Base is juice here for Walls. Now it's a lefty versus righty matchup. Walls this year uh, against lefties is batting 389. We'll take the first pitch in there for a strike, 0 and 1 is a count. Walls, though, has struck out three times so far here today. The base is juice, he's batting an even 400 on the year. Uh, Darian Williams is due up next for UNLV. Sanchez is set, the pitch. And that one's going to be set in the left field for a base hit. Grzyk is, uh, is will score. Here comes the go-ahead run. Play at the plate. It gets tipped, and UNLV is going to win. Alarcon is able to score from second. And Joey Walls with a walk-off winner for UNLV. And the Rebels will sweep the Spartans here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and win it 12-11. to Walls is able to sneak that one through in the left field. Krizik was able to easily score. Alarcon being waved home. You see the throw there. The cutoff man tipped it, or I think it tipped it there, and it just lazily rolled there to home. And the Rebels with a big time win, a big come from behind victory. UNLV wins it and improved to 25 and 11 on the year, 15 and 3 in conference play. All uh, the Spartans drop this one here, 18 and 18 will, is the Spartans' record, and fall to 9 and 9 in conference play. How about that for the Rebels coming back from three deficits? They were down five nothing. They were down by three going into the bottom of the eighth inning, tied it up, then down by one going into the bottom of the ninth, and get a big time hit from Joey Walls, his second hit of the ball game, and gets two RBIs, RBI number 35 and 36 four walls as UNLV wins this one here today for their 25th win and conference leading 15th win of this season. The winning pitcher today will be Troy Balco coming out of the pen, went two and two thirds innings. He was absolutely phenomenal, but actually picks up his first win of the season. For Balco who was just, like I said, just phenomenal out of the pen, uh, five strikeouts, Gave up a walk, gave up one hit, although it was a home run. He was almost in line for the loss. It was going to be a tough one there for Balco, but his team picked him, picked him up for the win there. Player of the game, well, you got to give it to the guy who got the game-winning hit, Joey Walls, a two-run single in the left field. He went two for five with two RBIs. Alarcon had two hits. Darian Williams with a hit. Eric Bajani with two hits. UNLV, yet again, another double-digit performance. They score 12 runs off of 12 hits, two errors. Well, the Spartans score 11 runs off of 13 hits and one error. The losing pitcher today, I, I believe here, is going to be Brady Hill. It, it should be uh, Hill who gave up the uh, two runners on the base pass. It would be his first loss of the year as UNLV, San Jose State, Two real good opportunities to take some games against UNLV, but they could not hold on for a victory. And the Rebels win this one here today in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in here on the YouTube broadcast here on the Mount West Network on Stadium and provided to us by UNLV Athletics and by Learfield. I want to thank all the guys for all their hard work out here today. Greatly appreciate the uh, all the hard work and you know on a very windy day. Uh, Got to thank everyone also for tuning in and taking the time to watch the broadcast here on your Saturday afternoon. I'm Wyatt Topchek signing off here from early Wilson Stadium where UNLV wins an exciting one, 12-11 here on this Saturday afternoon and win the series 3-0 over San Jose State. Next game for UNLV will be Monday against Loyola Marymount. Matt Neverett will be on the call. Like I said, I want to wish everyone a very pleasant rest of your Thursday, uh, Thursday Saturday afternoon, and we will see you Monday night. Wyatt Tomchek signing off here on the Mount West Network on Stadium.